New year, new same old problem, Spud. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever changes. At least it's a, a new problem this time. My uh, audio recorder decided that my SD card. Nothing changes. Uh, we just get older. You know, it's like it's like when you return home. You know, and you see your old schoolmates, and we're all still exactly the same. We're just balder and fatter. <laughs> yeah. You know. That's it. You know, we're still like the gurriers are still the gurriers. The scoundrels are still the scoundrels. The slappers are still the slappers. The nerds are still the nerds. We're just, we just get older. Isn't it not? Yeah. It's one thing I have noticed. Uh, as None of us older. achieve anything of note, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, how many lads do you go to school and end up in prison? Because far too yeah. many from my, I don't know. I was only in class with 30 know. kids. I don't know. Yeah. I, I was, think I was 31. So a good few of them are dead, which is uh, not great, I suppose. I don't know. I, I don't think any, yeah. any no, not from yeah. primary school. A couple of secondary school lads are dead, all right. A couple, of, I mean, a couple of them died during secondary school at their own hand. It's horrible. But, um, yeah, yeah happy new year, everyone. <laughs> yeah, happy new year. What I have noticed about growing old and about seeing people around me growing old, uh, older, um, is that you can recognize the child in an adult that I never really did when I was a child, and or, or you can recognize the teenager. You know, you can kind of go, oh, he, you know, that's just someone who was a teenager who got older. Well, ah, yeah, kids. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah. a separate species or something yeah. of, uh, you know. I find a lot of our parents are that, you know. Well, well, children oh, 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 who just oh, got a bit older. No, but yeah, yeah, all, all our like most of that that generation of they're not boomers, but they're born in the fifties and sixties. That is boomers, yes. doesn't it? No, but boomers are sexes, Yeah, but well, my parents predate. My dad's born. Yeah, but Ireland 49. is different, though. You couldn't really call them boomers in Ireland because. Well, there was a bit of an economic boom, but then England tried to fuck us over, didn't they? Surprise, surprise. Surprisingly, yeah. Um, um, yeah, no, it's just uh, they all had kids too young and just they didn't have a clue what to do with us. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. God help them. But then again, like our generation might be looked at as like we had kids too too late and we don't have the energy to look after them properly. And all that kind of stuff. So yeah, but I have the the mental emotional uh, intelligence to tell my kids I love them. So there's that, you know. That's <laughs> look yeah. after them and but all do that you? stuff. Do you? I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> do I? Do I love my son? That's quite, <laughs> yes. That's one of the, the very sure things in life that I know that that is true. Do I always um, be in in the correct mood and emotional sphere to deal with my son? Different question. Yeah, no, rarely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't no. know. Like they, 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 I was looking at a thing the other day um, and saying that, the, you know, remember that the big uh, conspiracy scare was that the world population was going to be completely reduced by some some big thing, you know. Um, but like it turns out it's naturally happening anyway. Just but it's a, it's a, it's a result of capitalism. Mm -hmm. So that's the <laughs> rather than the uh, like even China, they're saying it's, it's going to drastically by the end of the century is going to be like the population's way, way down to the point that they've now started shaming women in trying to have more babies and stuff like that. So. No, that's, that's, that's a smart approach. Yeah, yeah, that has work. worked, worked previously. Well, I mean, it's good uh, for the world. It means that the, 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 the war that everyone's scared about with China is something more than likely to happen because they'll have less cannon fodder, you know? But then again, yeah. Russia seems to be doing okay with their cannon fodder. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything, really. <laughs> I don't know. So. It's, yeah. I don't know. It's like because I mean, Musk and uh, Bezos, you know, the two most important people in the world. Right. We need to know every single thing that they say, and have an opinion about. Um, think that they should, you know, we should up up our game and have trillions of people on the earth because that's going to be much better for us. All I right. understand. I can understand why uh, people who uh, make money off the back of other no, people's labour. I don't what, think we should people. do that. <laughs> I was watching recently, um, Devs. I don't know who makes it. Apple TV probably. It's very good. Uh, it has the, everyone's favorite grumpy man in it. Um, from Parks and Recreation, the guy with the beard. He's in The Last of Us as well. Oh, Ron, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron, Swanson, Ron Swanson, I want to say. Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. Well, that's his it. character in uh, Parks and Recreation. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know his real name. Yeah, it's quite good, except for the main actor. She's 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 not a very good at. She she does this thing. Oh no! Where she speaks really slowly <laughs> <laughs> for like, emphasis like okay love i know you're thinking or you're acting that you're thinking but come on what's interesting as well is i noticed that Sorry. that like you know the way like most tv we watch has like the male, a male lead 
but mm. you know for like diversity issues and all that like there's a lot of like asian and, and black characters in this and i don't know sorry not that many, not, not not many black but a lot of the uh, asian and minority and like foreign people in it but then you know they've done this trick to like well um okay probably this was written for a male lead so we'll make her look like a man which they right. did yeah which um what's it's very good though it's all about yeah. the simulation and and and, and stuff like that I saw your man from uh, what's the one that's your man from Always Sunny in Philadelphia's and where they're making a game or something. That's not that one though. No, 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 it's no, no, it's not. But it's it's basically what Zuckerberg and, and Musk are doing that they're um oh, it's a spoiler, don't it? Um yeah, no, it's not a spoiler. It. No, it's not a spoiler. It's um about uh it's about simulation and putting ourselves into it. Oh, like transcendence, that Johnny Depp film that was terrible. I'm going to say yes. Park. Okay, yeah. Maybe. Where he uploads no himself into the computer and becomes AI and all this kind of... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, shit. Is and, it? Uh, mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's one of those films where it kind of... Well, it's it's ahead of its time in that it's, whatever, it's 25 years ago uh -huh. before. And now it's... And at the time you go, yeah, this is a bit silly. Probably if you watch it now, you go, hold on, this is scarily accurate. <laughs> <laughs> you know? but, uh, but I that, that other one you recommended, Foundation, I, I loved that. I thought that was fucking brilliant. Brilliant, wasn't it? Really, Absolutely. really good. Like that yeah. Top, yeah. top, top drawer of space opera. Yeah. Western space opera type thing. And your man, Day, he's such yeah, a great brilliant. fucking he's character. Brilliant. Oh, yeah, brilliant. He's, and it's, he's what an actor. horrible, a horrible, yeah, yeah. horrible man. But you yeah. can see as well, like, there's, there's some really good scenes in it where you're like, ah, yeah, I get him. Yeah. I, I under, totally understand his, his viewpoint and why yeah, I, he's I, such a, a dick. Mm -hmm. I often find it very hard to, you know, these the anti hero type things, like, say, uh, TV shows about mafia or, yeah. you know, like, or, you know, Scorsese films where you're just kind of. Going like, these are all horrible people. Why am I meant to be rooting for them? I can't sometimes find that yeah. very hard. I just go, I hope you all die horribly, you know. End the film. <laughs> but uh so like but I think the balance with what they in it is that oh he's an awful, awful person, but he's a brilliantly well written character. It, it, he's a full character. There's not he's not one dimensional, there's a, even though like I mean he's very one dimensional in, in one sense, but uh in that he's the same person. Um but he, you the actor himself, like oh, he's he, he, he's, he's, he's so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just brilliant to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been telling as many people that will fucking listen to me to to watch Foundation. I, I, if you're into sci-fi, it's great. Um, did yeah, you, I loved did it. you finish it all? You, the season two, all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I found the season two a bit slower. But the last three episodes of uh, season two. Oh, that's just, great. It's, oh, it's, it's Game of Thrones yeah. with spaceships. Yeah, you know, oh, so many and great names. Harry Seldon, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, the, yeah. The, all these fucking classics. He's good. Yeah, I've seen him in mm -hmm. something. He was in uh, that Chernobyl thing BBC did uh, a couple of years ago. He's very good in that as well. He's I yeah, he's, he's, the, um, he's his main. dad's uh, what's his name? That famous actor, um, Colin Farrell. Oh, Colin Farrell. Yeah, his dad's Colin Farrell. Yeah, he's one of the, the Gleasons. <laughs> yeah. No, he is. He's. Very, I just my my brain. Doesn't right. work. He, um, very, very famous actor. You know, right. like definitely. And and, uh, and as soon as you know who it is, I look it up because, uh, um, what do you call it? He looks exactly the same. What's his name? Isn't it? Harry Sheldon. Yeah, Harry Sheldon. H R I, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. Yeah, Foundation. Uh, Jared, Jared, Jared Harris. He is uh, Richard. Richard? Go away. Is he Harris. Richard Harris' son? Yeah. yeah, but when you look at him, you go, oh yeah, of course he's Richard Harris' son. Ah. <laughs> Oh, there's the new Gladiator coming. Richard Harris was in there, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah as far as yeah. I remember. That, 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 that looks like it's going to be a good crack. I, did, I wasn't a huge fan of the first one, I have to say. Oh, no, I, I know it. people loved it. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, you know what? When it came out first, I didn't like it. I thought it was too bit cheesy. But on a second and third watch, I was like, yeah, no, this is fucking, this is classic, actually. Yeah, I, mean, I, I didn't get to the second or third one. I just kind of watched it. And, and like, I mean, I mean, it's changed um, YouTube videos forever by having that hand going through the cornfield. I mean, how often have you seen that? It's the most used. For that alone, it was. I even rewatched uh, Troy a while ago because that got, everyone hated that when it came out. But on the second watch, like, there's some amazing actors in it. It's actually really, really good. You just yeah, see that in the cinema. It. That's the Brad Pitt thing, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Eric Banner and. Um, Maybe maybe Richard Harris. No, is it O'Toole? Peter O'Toole, I think, is in it. Or, or oh, Richard he? Harris. Whichever one died the most recently is in it. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, yeah, very good. So that's a so Yeah, Simi Foundation. Roundup. Yeah, Simi Foundation, though, is that the books are completely different or whatever. Some The usual thing of someone uh, I was talking about on Facebook and someone goes, yeah, pity they never read the books. And I'm going, oh. 
Uh, the book, the book is from <laughs> the sixties, so it's going to be, so it's, gonna be yeah. it's quite outdated now. Is it Isaac As- As- Asimov? Asimov, something like that. Uh, yeah, Asimov. Yeah, as far, I, well, I, as far I, as I know, yeah. it was one thing. Yeah, I got annoyed watching it over one thing because there's uh, it kind of there's this emperor. He's called Day, and he has two genetic brothers, uh, Night and Dawn, and they're based on this like old, 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 old emperor from whatever centuries ago, and they take his DNA and they just you know, make babies from it every so often. And, um, but I was reading the book last year, I think, and it had won that, um, that big science fiction prize. What's it called? Um, it's not the Philip K. Dick Award. It's the other one. Ah, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It doesn't oh, matter. Sure it's the biggest yeah. sci-fi book award. And I just got this massive great reviews and this, 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 the, the, the lady who wrote it had based it on this kind of Byzantine, um, hierarchy of government and all that where like stuff is delivered through poetry and I thought geez that's a fucking brilliant idea because this is the way the Byzantines would mm. they worked you'd go to court and everyone would kind of speak in this very specific type of of, of, of poetry and like, geez that's a great idea but her 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 linchpin of the great drama that was going on is exactly the fucking same thing as Sandation this genetic oh, lineage, right. hierarchy lineage and so watching it was like, ah, they've stolen that from the book. And then, at, <laughs> and then at the end of it, it comes up, you know, based on the books by da da da. And I was like, ah, oh, she fucking she stole it from his stole books. It. Yeah. You know? Ah. Yeah, I suppose that that's the thing though. Like when you have a book that's whatever, sixty years, seventy years, whatever it is. When was the sixties? The fifties? Sixty. Yeah. Seventy years, whatever. Say. So, Thirty Jesus years Christ. ago. No, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Someone said, like the the. Between now and 1980 is the same as between now and 1937 or something. Ah! Or, or 1980 and some, some all of those things that you see on Facebook. But yeah, my point is that, so then it becomes part of um, culture or whatever, general culture or whatever, um, the book. And then, you know, people then feed off or get influenced yeah. by it, whatever. And then when they go and remake it, you go, it's like, what's going to happen, I would assume, when uh, if they ever make the Invisibles TV show, where they'll just go, but well, that's just, you know, stolen from everything. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. it's not. It was the one they did at first that everyone yeah. stole. So to the point that the original thing, in some sense, has to change in order not to uh-huh. <laughs> feel like it, it's redundant. Such is life. I mean, I'm sure Foundation's not the very first story to have a... Uh, you know, it's some sort of genetic three person trinity, wasn't. trinity uh, ruling <laughs> the world where you have a father mm. uh, and a son and uh, the Holy Ghost. Um, but uh, I watched the um, John Lennon documentary about the last couple of days and the Mark Chapman thing. That that's very interesting, even if you're not into John Lennon, um, just because it just, it it opened my eyes a bit into the sense of how unprepared John Lennon was to be killed. And I know this sounds really weird, but it's kind of like, because it's kind of in my head, you know, it's kind of a, a fairy story, the Beatles thing, all that, you know, it's just kind of, it's documentary, it's people, it's almost of people you know, and not much has ever talked about it other than Paul McCartney saying that's a bit of a drag or whatever, <laughs> so he finds out, you know, and someone sticks a microphone in his face. But just like the horrifying things of that, uh, like an hour beforehand, he's in this, been interviewed and talking about how positive he is about the future and all the things he wants to get done and, you know, how great, he's in a great place now and that he's really excited about life for the first time in a long while. And bang. Well, I mean, that's perfect time to die then as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, because the, the next two episodes are about Mark uh, or da- Mark David Chapman. It's good. It's good. Uh, uh, and if you're into serial killer, not serial killer, but murder mystery stuff, it's probably good. But if you're into John Lennon, it's, there's a lot, there was lots of stuff in it and lots of footage and stuff that I hadn't seen before. What's that? There's, 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 the, there's, the, there's the serial killer thing around it with comedy. What's it called? Based on a true story. That's ridiculous. It's very funny. Right. It's very, very stupid. Very, really stupid. But uh, yeah, it's a good crack. It's, uh, yeah, it's fun. Right, yeah. I, have, I haven't even heard of it. I watched yeah. uh, Bo is Afraid. Yeah, are you aware of that? The, no. um, it's the guy who did Hereditary and Midsummer, And this All is right. his new film. It's um, Joachim Phoenix. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it's just shit. To be honest. Is it? Yeah, it's like you could see, and I suppose in one sense, what they're trying, what he's trying to do, which is to show the world from someone who suffers from, I have a, you know, mental illness. <laughs> but then it's, but then it's. But sure, look what I mean. Do you want to be watching stuff? You can just look in the well, mirror that, for stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Okay, like, I, I live that life. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> That, well, but, uh, that, this is the thing we always talking about. This we had friends over over, over over Christmas, and we were talking about the kind of. 
I was kind of slagging them off because they watch shit TV, <laughs> romantic dramas, and I know so I'm like, I was like, fucking romance. What do you want? To, what do you want to watch romance for? You're married. You don't need romance. You know what I mean? Because you. <laughs> oh, no, maybe you do. No, but you, you're living you're married. Romance day, is dead. You know? yeah. And then they're like, no, but like you need to work in relationships. And I was like, no, what do you mean you need to work? If I have to work in relationships, I just get a new one. There's no point. Well, the relationship should not be work. It's a union. It's a coming together. That's not right. work. Well, I mean, if you're in a relationship and it's work, get the fuck out of it. Do I know. Don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I have no, to say. I what's think the all, point? all relationships. But you could sit out with any relationship then. Oh, your yeah. family, your friends, anyone. Anyway. Just just leave everything. Then. You, so there's no relationship you have that isn't work that you think is worth fighting for or getting over, compromising, any of those things. Well, I suppose there's plenty where you just have to go, eh, it, that's a you problem, not a me problem. Right. Yeah, but like with our parents, we can all sit out of our parents. You know what I mean? It's like, like we know, we know, we're, we hit our twenties and we're like, "Fucking hell!" Uh, or you're you're in your teenagers, teenage years, and you fucking hate them because you're supposed to. You're a teenager. And in your twenties, you're like, "Oh, they should fix themselves." And in your thirties, you're like, "Oh, they should fix themselves even harder." And then in your forties, you're like, "You know what? <laughs> it's a you thing." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just have to let them out. I do. I don't have any relationship that doesn't work. Not one. Not one single one. So I would just have to leave all my relationships. So. <laughs> Yeah. So a common denominator now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, obviously I'm taking poetic license and I'm taking the piece, mm. but it's kind of like Yeah, but I, I I mean it to a certain level. You know what I mean? Mm. Like if you're in a relationship and you're arguing all the time, is that really Yeah, but I don't think that's what people are saying when I Ness say well, maybe. I don't know, I can't speak for other people. I, I think some people are. Oh no. are they, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, but look, obviously, tr- obviously, also thriving that from the argument. You see some couples that just fucking love shouting at each other and they're, you know, definitely yeah, happy that, the next that, day. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, that's strange. Yeah, yeah Irish boomers, that's what that is. Yeah, all yeah. the relationships are like that. It's just arguing all the time and then their mates the next day. So, what the fuck is going on there? That's not normal, you know? But yeah, okay. I, I, I think, uh, kind of, I suppose, conflict in a relationship, if it's uh, people are growing, is inevitable. If you're just saying the exact same person being stagnant and relationship isn't going anywhere, I can see where there wouldn't be any issues. Oh yeah, but well there's actually... no point in being like, yeah, I mean, I remember I had a friend years ago and he was like, you know, he used to kind of boast, oh, me and my wife have never had an argument. And, you know, three or four years later they're divorced because he re- <laughs> yeah. he realised his balls were in yeah. her purse the whole time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's, yeah, don't have that's an, We don't have an argument because I'm not allowed to have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not allowed to have an yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... You know, I just find that like when we argue, it just it's just it's just a kind of underlying of a oh, shit we haven't had sex in like a week. Okay, so we need to fix that, and then we're grand again. So, you know, we just beat Addie's little throat. We're like, wait no, ah, oh, we haven't done it. Okay, and it's okay <laughs> yeah. again. Do you know, that's that all it is. It's just like, but <laughs> but but on that kind of kind of same note, it's kind of like, you know, the release the reason kind of relationships tend to stop working is because people fucking. People stop doing stuff together. And it's very easy to do. You fall into the trap of being a parent and bringing up the swimming and piano and whatever, blah, 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 blah. And you don't find time for yourselves to fucking do stuff. And it's like, any relationship, your friends as well. Like, if you're not doing stuff with your mates, you're not going to be mates for very long. And it's, you know, I was reading a, a thing a while ago about someone who gave up drinking and then they came to realise oh, all of her friends are souls because they were just, <laughs> you know, like the only time they met it's when they're drinking and they're just slagging each other and gossiping and having crack. But then when you take the alcohol out of it, you're like, Jesus, these people, she realized, Jesus, these people are terrible. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that. Or the same, I suppose, if you've been hanging around with a lot of stoners and you give up uh, yeah. <laughs> doing that, you go, you realize, oh, well, hold on. <laughs> yeah. The thing that I thought we had in common is uh, just very superficial. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so that's the TV roundup, isn't it? Movies. Uh, Godzilla minus one is brilliant. Brilliant. It's like um, it's Godzilla movie clearly, but um, the, it, all of the I've characters. I've never seen a Godzilla it, movie. They're exactly as you think, though. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, that's what the characters in it. The reason why they're trying to save the day. The the motivations. They're all. It's all really well written and really well done. It's it, and the effects. Everything's perfect. It's good. Like as monster movies goes, like it's probably an eight out of ten. Maybe really good. I'll see anything else recently. That's about it. I don't think I haven't. Uh, I've watched a lot of Willy Wonka. The new Willy Wonka is brilliant as well. There's a new Willy Wonka. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right. It's, it's a prequel. It's really good. 
Um, I wasn't expected. I've seen the trailer a couple of months ago. There's a prequel. Inside. Wait, no. Yeah, it's, there's, no there, huh? there's a sequel. Roald Dahl, The Glass Elevator. Yeah. That and was never film. made into a film. No, yeah. So they made... They go, up in, go up into space and it's a, there's a space That's a mad and, book. Yeah, I read, yeah, it, for, I read it for the young lad there a couple yeah. months ago. It's fucking no, this, crazy. This is uh, Willy Walker's story, the, the new film, of how he starts The Chocolate Factory. And so it has nothing to do with Roald Dahl? No. Right. Oh, other than it's... Um, you know, you can. It's it's more referencing the Gene Wilder movie than it is the uh -huh. movie stuff. So it's okay. a, like kind of a, a prequel to that, but there's obviously bits that it fears off in its own time. It's very good. Very. I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting it to hate it, and it's really, really good. It's like watching a film when you're a kid again. There has, oh, it has yeah. there's a great quality to it or whatever. And people seem to like it. He's great. Your man Timothy, whatever we you pronounce that second name, the guy from Dalton, Dune. Timothy Dalton as Willy Wonka. Um, Great is he still alive? <laughs> Timmy Dalton, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he the best Bond or the worst Bond? I would all have said he was the best Bond until I went and watched his films and came in this, every Wednesday to put a new James Bond or a James Bond movie on. I went to see the two of them and his two movies are awful. Isn't so, his the awful. one with the, under, the underwater car? No, that's uh, Roger Moore. That's The Spy You Love Me as far as that. The white car mm. that goes underwater, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. No, his ones are tremendously racist and... Uh, <laughs> just dumb, like, but uh, he, he, but it's it's one of those things. It's like, like he's a good Bond, but it's just the movies are in are probably terrible. Or kind of, I don't know. And I had more of an appreciation for the Roger Moore ones when I watched them because they're really funny and really stupid and really well yeah, done. But very they're just, cheesy. Yeah, it's just different. You know, it's it's not the Pierce Brosnan ones are not really. Um, yeah, they're not, they're not very good. Pierce Brosnan's yeah. pretty good, but the, the films yeah, are yeah. good. Yeah. But it's just it's for it's like a, I think it could be a generational thing. It's not for me, maybe. That's not my James Bond. Yeah, no, although you know. I liked your man, um, the latest one. What's his name? The really good looking fella. Yeah, the Craig. Oh, Craig Craig Davis. Yeah. So uh Craig Charles from no, not Craig Dave. Uh, Craig Dave Bo Selector. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Charles from White Dwarf. Um yeah. Whatever his name but, is. But they're 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 like just an English Daniel version. Craig. Of, Daniel, Daniel Craig. Yeah, Daniel they're they're an English version of the born identity. That's what they are, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that's great. <laughs> Shake the camera, morning, yeah. That uh rooftop scene where he's running in Born Identity Troll and jumps through the windows, oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, right, I think we've talked <laughs> enough about multimedia. Uh, do you want to do these questions? Yeah, that's a lot. Um, or right, now, do you want to talk about before we get into it? Just happy new year to everyone. Thanks for listening last year, and you know, we'll, we'll probably be as sporadic this year, but you know, yeah, there's no point, stick having, around. yeah, stick around. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know, do. Um, yeah. Electro Wizard. Thoughts on magic in relationships. Do you share what you do or are working on with your partner? Personally, I talk about magic with my partner, but I've only practiced with them in groups uh, occasions a couple of times. Um, I don't talk to anyone about my magic anymore. So uh, I don't I certainly, I'm not, I don't hide anything. It's not as if I'm... Um, off the corner, <laughs> going, oh, don't look at me, don't look at the man. But I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, she's not that interested in you. So, I mean, you'd be like talking to someone, it's like talking to someone that's not that interested, you could bore them to death, but why not? Uh, it's like, uh, uh, do you want to see my collection of Matika hand tools? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not really, you know. Or it's like, you know, you know, we're at that age where, like, oh, what's that? I read something. Men in their single men in their forties. One is the podcast guy. One is the craft beer guy. One is the self help guy. They're all just boring bastards, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I, I if I'm asked, I'll talk to anyone about it. Oh. But like, I don't really put it out there. Stuff comes up like in conversations, and then you can kind of go into a bit of a rant or a spiel about something and you might get a few raised eyebrows because it's like shit what the f how, how come this guy knows about this subject kind of thing you know like religion will come up among yeah. your mates and then you know it might turn to angels or something and then I'll just fucking talk loads about it and they're like whoa how come you know so much about this and I'm like well, ah you know reading or whatever yeah. so, you know but no, the same as you I don't hide it but I don't talk about it yeah I've, I've no one in real life who ever really asked me ever like that's it's never been um, some very, very occasionally ever comes up. Um, Vanessa's is good at magic. She's anything she's ever done. She's got her, her kind of um, 
Every single one of her goals or problems, whatever we want to look at, would just be solved by money. That's so. I mean, so that that's it <laughs> as far as she's <laughs> concerned. So you know, it's, and it's not even that. It, it's more just things she wants to do, experience or grow a business or that kind of stuff. But there's no kind of burning need to be one with the divinity or to find herself or to uh, do any of that, that that kind of. Uh, Stuff that a lot of us do, where you're trying to, what's good on? She's like, who cares? You yeah, know, do yeah, it. just give me like, a million quid and everything yeah, be fine. Yeah. Shut the fuck <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, she's dead right I though. Mean, yeah, yeah, she is. A, yeah, and and you know, she's happy enough. But to, like, I mean, she she obviously she meditates, she does yoga and all that. It's she's a yoga teacher, so it's not as if she's, uh, you know, just I don't know, vapid or whatever. <laughs> it's like you know, it, that's as you could. But I suppose you can be a bit when you, money is your only goal. It's it's more. Um, I suppose rather than saying money's a goal, it's the uh, it's the means to getting the things she wants. It's literally you yeah. just need money to do them. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, 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 I've other than the stuff in Discord, I've never done mm. grip stuff. Uh, I've never done. I've never done. Oh, I did. I did magic with uh, Max at the Hill of Tara, where we did stuff in the wishing tree. Um, but that's more. I did magic adjacent to someone else. That, 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 that uh, actually that, together. We, if we had a tied the the ribbon to the tree together, I suppose that would have been a group thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say it'd be good fun. But you'd you'd have to be in. I think you'd probably have to be in a city or something like that to have enough people to, uh, close by to to have a group of people that you could you could work with. Yeah. You know, you have to be sure of the common goal as well. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's just experimentation, which an awful lot of groups are, just let's see what happens, you know. Which, uh, you know. Excuse me. Why not? Okay. Um, Jason. Exactly how unethical would it be to trick your Dungeons & Dragons players, that's the non-cool way of saying D&D, &D, uh, into doing real magic fire the words actions in-game? Full-on satanic panic up in here. Um, I think it's as unethical as doing anything, uh, tricking people into doing anything they're unaware of doing. Uh, but I do it to my son a lot, so uh, <laughs> you know, like I trick him into doing things. Uh, yeah, no, carrots are lovely. It's just like chocolate, um, or whatever. So I don't know. It depends on what exactly you're. I suppose you're tricking people into doing to actually answer the question. I know it's a, just a silly question, though. It comes down to I suppose that kind of thing of. Would, especially when people talk about love magic or any kind of persuasion magic, would you be happy enough doing it, um, forcing someone to, to agree to what you want them to do if, if you weren't doing it through magic, if you're doing it with a knife? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, have sex with me. <laughs> you know, like, it, it, so it, from an ethical or Some moral point of view. Some chicks are into that, man. Oh, well, that's, you know, what I mean, <laughs> then, it's, then it's very ethical. But... Uh, <laughs> But it's it's I don't it's like it's as if there's some sort of you, you get a pass because just it's you magic. have to have a safe word. You know what I mean? Because like sometimes yeah. like even if I say average, no, don't stop. Number. It's like well, yeah, but like what what do you mean? Like <laughs> well, if I say no, don't stop. Yeah, but it's it's too much. Like yeah. And then the but and then the safe word is banana pants or something. Yeah, yeah. I've revealed far too much now. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> what, what's your uh, thoughts on ethical behaviour in? Uh... Well, I mean, if you're in, if you're like the smartest guy in the room, and and you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, and like, I, I what? Hmm, I was thinking how to word this nicely, and I can't. But it's kind of like, if you're an adult, and you're still playing teenagers' board games, then, then those suckers deserve everything they fucking get. <laughs> Yeah. You know, no, you're you're awful judgmental man. You really are. Just, it's, it's supposed yeah. to be a joke, okay? Don't, no, look, I, I I know uh, nothing about Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. and I honestly I don't care about it. Okay. So sorry. <laughs> um, Lyle, best new magic book you read as of late? I haven't read that in ages. Have you? Yeah, Magically. I, I read. Um, Harash is new one, or Reach, Near Enemies of the of the Truth. It's quite good. Is it it's, magic, uh, though? This is what oh, put me off on that question. Magic. Um, it talks about magic in it, certainly right. does, but it kind of debunks it and saying, you know, don't have, don't do it. It's that it's, it's not real. That From what point enemy. of view? Well, he, well, he's, hand, yeah, but it's very, I, what I've noticed in this book, he's very much takes a kind of, um, 
Let me see. Not like he has a, a spiritual outlook where you know just very woo, woo bits, but he's not woo at all when it comes down to actual practical day to day. He'd be quite, um, I suppose, mundane, science, straight laced. You know, no law of attractions, no magic, no. Um, I don't know. All of those those type of things, whatever. Like the, almost nearly even that there's no gods, no angels, no anything. Even though that is part of his kind of thing, he's almost like has two camps where he's very, in some way, if you took it out of context, you'd go, oh, this guy's an atheist, anti, you know, full-on materialist mm -hmm. type thing. But I suppose it's just him trying to approach it from a rational point of view. Like, there's a whole section on energy healing and all this stuff that he just completely and utterly kind of, um, says there's no scientific evidence for it, so therefore it's, it's not real. Um, which, you know, whatever, that's fine, that's the thing, but it's just then, and then, but he also is, you know, uh, talks about Shiva and Shakti and the oneness and the expansion mm -hmm. and, and all this. Surely there's some scientific evidence for energy healing by now, though. Um, there's Gotta some. Be. There's some for acupuncture, but it's still not <clears throat> fully believable or accepted. That the actual when you put the needle in and you flick it, whatever it's to do, that 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 does something. There seems to be there's some effect. It. But uh, it's just both he, his his chapters about placebo and uh, nocebo and all the, the kind of standard thing. Mm. And in one sense, going this magic thing called placebo, and then just kind of. Uh, you know, explains it away as if it's nothing. Goes well. No, that, that's actually really interesting. Mm, that whole interesting. thing. Yeah. I think. I think when you're someone like that, though, you you just kind of got to pick a side rather than going with. What do you think? I don't know because because no, think... what I'm hearing from you is mm. kind of like a bit of. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. It's kind of like. It sounds like you can't trust him fully because he's he's not going, he's not picking a side. Uh, no, I, I think he uh, he's just. A, well, maybe I'm going to say I'm going to say exact same thing. I, th I think it's that. I think it, there's an incongruity between some of the things he says, rather than um, a disagreement, in that he kind of can dismiss something on one ground but believe something on the same ground. On the same ground somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that. And um, both, I think, are, are, can be like when he says both, you go, yeah, well, that makes sense. But it, it's as if he, it's it's that thing of allow one small miracle and I can explain the rest of you, you know. And it's good. No, well, that's actually the interesting bit is that one small miracle or yeah. whatever it is. Um, but also, it's it's the nature of it, the book. Uh, I think is that it, it's approaching to try and get people to not. Um, get lost in the woo and just believe everything and have complete magical thinking that you think you know that. All of the stuff that is kind of prevalent in the new age of like, oh, my kid is cancelled because God's teaching me a lesson, or you know that um, let's give uh, all my money to uh, and make all my decisions based on you know my fortune teller, or, or you know just trying to, to have people have a bit kind of, if, I suppose in one sense a common sense, a bit more, be a mm -hmm. bit more clued into it, whatever. But um, I don't know, like there's nothing new in it. But also I had done his course on this. And I also had read all the blog posts that you know based on. So it, if, I, I would be interested to see if someone read it who hadn't, <laughs> you know, had any kind of um, thing from it. was good, but it's definitely, it's a different book from him, certainly. It's more in the um, self-help, new age type of book than it is like his other one on uh, Tantra and, right. um, you know, the, the sutras and stuff like that. But good, but it's, you know, he reads it as well, which is always nice when the, the author reads the audiobook. Uh, I would give it, I don't know, six out of ten, seven out of ten, depending on where you're at, where you're at. If mm -hmm. you, um, this could be the best book for you because it could get you out of, or go, uh, past and, you know, an awful lot of bullshit that you've been believing for a while, you know, I'm kind of holding on to. Or, but it also, there's a part of me that's just kind of went, oh, I got a bit kind of disenchanted by it all too. Just the mood I'm into. <laughs> After that, I listened to, because it came up, it was uh, Julius Evla. I know you're not allowed to listen to him, or talk about him. Um, his book on uh, Hermeticism, the Royal Art. I'll tell you, <laughs> I understood every word in it. I know what the words mean. <laughs> I understand the, the thing, but Jesus, there's some amount of just stuff that just doesn't. It's it's all symbolism, mythology. And, uh -huh. you know, there's like ten words for everything, purposely. You know, to to really try to make it hard because it was meant to go hand in hand with an actual physically present teacher or system or initiation and stuff like that. So the books are written for people who actually know. So like say like there's things like mercury and then there's double mercury and salt and you know and sulfur and they all can in one context mean the same thing. 
and in another context means something else and you know the body is also Mercury but it's also Saturn and it's like by the end of it it's just the wet there's the wet part the dry part the white the black the red all these things and just at the end I was just going oh Jesus fucking Christ <laughs> yeah, it's just too much yeah. it's like right and I got, got to the end like, some bits of it look like, oh that's interesting and then you read at the end of it you know um, he didn't have a clue about hermeticism and it's all wrong you go, oh well that was a complete waste of time um, like he's I just wonder those people, I suppose, that it's just um, if it came up because it was on Scribed or Everand or whatever it's fucking called now. Um, and it was just literally the next book or while it was out for a walk and it goes, right, it's on. And I just kind of got into it. But um, I don't know. There was a huge argument recently about his book getting published um, by Inner Traditions, his magic book. Um, so he's one of those <laughs> people you're not meant to read or about yeah. to talk about. But he's no, a fascist, no. isn't he? He yeah, well, fascist. no, he's a super fascist. Okay, super you know, have to get it right. Yeah, he's above fascism. Right. Um, yeah, they're just like well, an arsehole. Like, and, uh, yeah. like, his stuff in Magic and his stuff in Awakening and all, it's all, like, I mean, dead on, yeah. But it's what then, what, what he uh, extrapolated from that and what he, you know, how he approached that to life, there, you know, by all accounts seems to be terrible. Right. But, uh, there's not no poli politics in the Hermeticism book at all, at all. You know, you, if it was written by someone who wasn't, had in any sort of name, you you wouldn't feel like you're in enemy territory or anything like that. You know, it's just. But, no, you'd be cancelled now, Tommy. Ah, you know, grand. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> I, I, I'll show you what I what I read most recently, but it's oh. not. They're not new, and it's a while since I read them. I was doing that last summer, the Sworn Book of Honorius. Oh yeah, how did that go? Um. So you do 30 days of fasting and praying and it's, you know, the aim is to get, you know, Bhagavad Gita style, you know, Krishna, show me your face kind of thing, which didn't happen. Right. But, but like you're supposed, you're supposed to not have sex and all that stuff and like, that's not happening. You know, it's just, yeah. it's not like, I mean, okay, you can like not have sex for 30 days and see God or like you can have sex sporadically. Yeah, I'm taking the second one there because I'm human and that's yeah, what yeah. we're here for. And um, yeah, no, it's um, no, I, I really, I, I enjoyed it. It was it, some of the bits were a bit of a slog because, like, you're reading like just these weird kind of they're not Latin words, barbarous words, kind of Latin-y type of words. And mm. but um, yeah, it, uh, a lot of sinks uh, around. The, it's um, worth doing. I, I, I give it a go. Like, I have the arbitral there as well. Which I yeah, finished. I must get into that. That might be a good um, group challenge to do at some point. The arbitral. Um, I, I was I was going through Yodorovsky's Psycho Magia Psycho Magic book as well, which is just fucking brilliant. Oh. You know, there's a lot in there. <laughs> it's great. Like, just okay, figure out. You know, you have some psychological problem. Find a fucking do like a mad ritual. You know, do just something fucking bonkers. Yeah, to, yeah. To to tell to tell your subconscious that you're listening, and it's just it's great. It's good fun. Yeah. You know. Um, that's it really I mean I'm reading it's mostly psychology I'm reading or fiction I'm reading at the minute like Carl Rogers or Maslow or Victor Frankl stuff like that and um, yeah Gabor Mate's last book was really good because it's just it's just a book about it's the myth of normal and that, like there there is no normal like they're, they're just fucking in, nobody is normal we're all we're all messed up but what's great about the book is that like at this fucking moment in time now, we actually have the tools to fix ourselves, but you need to want to do it, you know? Yeah. And I yeah, suppose yeah. it's just a lot of people just kind of don't, don't want to do it or aren't ready to do it. Or don't think they're able to do it. Or, or that too. Yeah. 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 I'm reading um, Cosmogonic Eros by Ludwig Klages, uh, another, another person who will get me cancelled. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's, it's, I find it it's obviously not that good because I've been reading even your it controversial six, books you probably have like four copies of the anarchist cookbook there or something I don't, I don't have it at all no, no, <laughs> I've never, I had it in PDF once um, no it's just it's, that's kind of uh, there's something in me that kind of goes some goes you can't read that and go well I'm definitely fucking ah yeah well then I have to read it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah yeah I like yeah, it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, 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 it's one of these books that um and he's, he's, he, the translation is quite good. He's, he's a German guy, but I mean, he's a paedophile. Jesus Christ! Like you know, oh, they're right. all okay. fucking. He, yeah, he he was having sex with a twelve-year-old, but it was fine because his mother consented to it, so that's grand, you know. 
Um, they the author's mother. <laughs> no, the, the, the 12 year old girl's mother. But like they had a relationship for like 40 years after. Not I think that makes any difference. But, like, but, uh, Jesus. You know, it's just oh, like, Jesus Christ, lads. You know, what, 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 why do, is everyone an arsehole? And anyway, the whole book's about love, anyway, strangely enough. But, wow. um, and he does, he actually, in it, he, 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 he get, gets quite annoyed about uh, pederastry. Uh, which that's boys, though, isn't it? So it's, it's it's okay to be annoyed at people who have sex with young boys rather than have sex with young girls. <laughs> that's that's fine. Um, wow. But anyway, it's it, it's um, it's it's it starts off and it's uh, you know it's it's almost like the Jordan Peterson thing of let's define what eros isn't. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So, well, then, you know, and then you finally get it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's good. But it, it's it's I don't know. I would prefer, I think, a book talking about Clagus and his stuff then mm-hmm. maybe you know you know it's like when you're in starting with young you know read some books about him for a while and get an overall kind of sense of it rather than getting into the minutia of you know well eros is not quite sexual love because there's a difference and it's not the love of your country and go right okay just tell me what it is just tell me yeah. what, what's your point what's your fucking yeah. point and then i i think i'd prefer that in books is go like the first chapter should be here's my theory here it is boom and now I'm going to prove it. Rather than oh, yeah. here, you know, and then on the last page, you, you find out, because you go, oh, yeah, I don't agree with that. <laughs> that's, what, um, that's the way Nietzsche writes. Oh, is it? Right. Yeah, okay. Nietzsche gives you his idea and he says, now, this is a thought experiment, right? right. But I want to explain to you why it's it's worth considering. And uh, yeah, everyone should read some Nietzsche. It's fucking great stuff. Yeah, you know? and it's definitely, it's, it's on my... Uh, <clears throat> On my list this year because I've never I've never read him. I, I've read about him, um, Navo. And I just, if you try and get into the kind of Nietzsche through YouTube videos, you get into very strange territory. So that's probably not. Yeah, the... it's mad how many people have read him and just take the wrong fucking end of the stick altogether. You know, yeah. ended up doing no fap Novembers or whatever. So, mm. Okay, what? Oh. Mm. Um, I'm ignoring uh, eco, uh, eco cleanse uh, question. <laughs> Just ignoring it. It'll it'll happen out of its own accord. It'll just uh, it'll be a naturally. It will be it will be brought into the world of its own accord. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It will be uh, given to you, and it is for you to do something with. Yeah. Um, Bobby, what spirit has profoundly impacted your journeys? Um, I was thinking about this. I was going. I I, I don't think I had an answer to it. Like I, I would say, the one that imp- impacted my journey the most of the last while is black. Now, I don't know if he's a spirit or if he's uh, Jason or what, what exactly he is, but uh, that's probably American commercials. <laughs> yeah. Or just, you know, uh, whatever it is. But um, it's probably because it's the, the one that felt more like an actual relationship. You know, when people talk about working with spirits, working with. Yeah. So I, just, I don't, I don't. My experience of that is I try to have communication with uh, a spirit and nothing happens. Mm-hmm. Um, other than maybe Ganesha, like Ganesha would probably be my second answer to that. Just, but I can't. You don't know how much of that's just wishful thinking or whatever. But he did turn up in dreams and you know, big dreams and stuff like that. So there's there's seen and a lot of the journeying and stuff. Well, probably Black has had the, the biggest impact on, on me. Whatever he is, even if it is Jason, still <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Um. You're not really a spirit man, though, are you? Oh, but I mean, does the HGA count? It has to be that then. It has to be her, mm. you know. Yeah, it would make sense. Even though, like, yeah, you get a lot of things at the start. There was one a while ago. So I sat down to do a. Hmm. I don't think I'm allowed to say what meditation I was doing, but um, I was doing that. It's quite a hardcore <laughs> thing, and I you can go into it with an intention or without one and just see what happens or with one to see if you can make it happen. And I went in to see if one make it happen and like immediately she just went, no, you're not ready. Right, cool. And like, I I think previously I would have just went, oh, okay, so I'll just sit and meditate anyway. But then I went, no, hold on, no, wait. Fucking grab the bull by the horns here and say, okay, so what can I do to, to be ready for it? And then during the meditation, I just got slaughtered with this <laughs> horrible... Um, drama hero victim stuff of uh, uh, growing up and being bullied and all the kind of things that happen all around that um, the bully the parents his parents school and just in fucking fucking hell 15 minutes are over and I was like oh god I'm depressed now again you know 
It's a weird thing I need to ask someone because I keep coming back to this hero victim thing and fucking almost everything I do, like all these binding practices and all this kind of stuff. It's just, I just keep, that's all it seems to me there is in this world mm. is that, okay, I'm not explaining this properly. So during a meditation thing, you have some kind of vision and it's an archetype. Okay, that's identifiable. We can see that. But actually, if you look at a further, you can see that there's fucking two things going on here. And there's the shadow side of it and the golden shadow side of it. There's the hero and the victim of fucking everything. And But it's this whole kind of cosmic yin-yang thing as well. There's, you can't have one without the other. So fucking what do you do? You know, like which... Is there a role to be played? Or, or is there something to be done where I can kind of walk the line properly down the middle without being the victim but also without being the hero because if you become too much of a hero like I wrote in that article you end up being like Cyclops from mm. X-Men he's a douchebag yeah, 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 <laughs> you know yeah. and if you're the victim you're just like oh, everybody hates you you know and it's but, but like well, you I mean, have is to, that, is, yeah isn't that you no, it's just like, well, yeah, you have to like you can't you have to experience being the victim to try and pull yourself out of it and to become a hero but then you can't become too much of a hero because then you become like day in the yeah, 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 foundation yeah, yeah, exactly. thing you yeah, know yeah. Um, Jung would say it's the conjunction of opposites I mean that's from Alfie you know, yeah. you know that it's that's the thing that I suppose Buddha says in the middle way or whatever um, I know I think it's allow it to be a continuum thing but why you have to pick one side over the other well no okay so it's, just, yeah. it's, it's not always about picking either one though it's just that like it, it's just lately in everything that I examine to as far as I can examine, mm. that's all I'm finding. Because like Jung would be like, find the archetype. You know, mm. which of the four archetypes is it? Is the anima, the animus, the shadow, the... The, the mammy. The, the self <laughs> and... Uh, no, because there's only four. There's the shadow. Yeah. Well, he did self. expand it later, didn't he? Yeah, he put more then. Yeah. Um, but then like within each one of those then, I call it... Okay, there's... There's, what's what's going on I see is that there's a shadow and a victim or a hero mm. and a victim of each one you yeah. know and I can't seem to can't seem to get further than that and but, but, but why do you think there has to be anything further than that what, what's your dilemma now if that's what you're finding why are you looking for more if that's what's presenting if that's what it is if that's how it is I don't know that's yeah. a good question I don't know how I'm looking. Yeah. Because you, you, see, you see they think it's a problem and go, well, that might be the solution. Oh, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Might, like, just, but it might be satisfactory, but that's okay too. You know, it doesn't yeah, yeah. have to be satisfactory. No, that makes that, 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 that makes perfect sense because if I am just seeing the yin-yang and everything, and well, that's just fucking everything that's is, what, That's it? what you're seeing. Yeah, that, and that, that could be, you know. Huh. Yeah. All right, Tommy, I'm enlightened now. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> no worries. No worries. That is. <laughs> I'll invite you later. Um, <laughs> Okay, huh. so, um, right, we'll move along. Um, flamed, how do you pronounce this? Flamed, flamed dryad. Flamed Isn't the dryad. dryad a word for druid? Isn't that where it comes from? I don't know. I don't know. Sounds good. Find so, f fiery druid. Um, how do you rationalise reading new occult texts when you can basically spend a lifetime working with the ideas from just one? As the thought process is in each one can lead to deeper meaning and revelation with time. Um, I think this is a good question. Um, but I don't like it. <laughs> In that, uh, I I think it, it's kind of yeah you can you could do that with anything, uh, it's, but it's like why listen to uh, another album when when you already have your favorite album? Why listen to new music? Why um, have new experiences when you can just uh, you know like I mean you could look at your family and you could learn it probably everything you could you'd need to know about life from just <laughs> <laughs> looking at that. Dynamic, Surely there's easier ways, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. But I think but the actual answer to it for me is that if I, I haven't found a book that I want to dedicate my life to pursuing because any books that I've spent or thoughts or theories, philosophies or whatever um, become dissatisfactory after a while. I go, well, I don't believe that or I don't um, agree with that or whatever, which is fine. And there is, a, there is a kind of a trap there in that you get you move away from something as soon as it's hard or you disagree with it and just, uh, that there is benefit in working through it and, and stuff like that. But um, you could, you, could, you certainly could, but I, 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 I haven't found a book that I'd want to. What's your answer? You've probably a better answer. You say, you, you're the type of person to have a good answer to this question. No pressure. <laughs> 
Do, 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 do. As the thought process is in each one can lead to deeper meaning and revelation from time. Okay, well, that's the second sentence there is why you should continue to keep reading if it's on the same subject so that you learn more about it. Yeah. Mm. But why would you keep reading more? I don't see it's a hard one because I was thinking about this earlier today and it's like, because there's so many faking occult books out there now and there's so many snake oil salesmen as well who are writing stuff which is really low value. I'm talking like the popular witchy books and all that, you know? And it's not that, I just want to be clear now, it's not to be anti-witch on this thing, but it's that like, what would be more of more value is like looking at the source book that they're getting stuff from rather than buying the new shiny book from the popular bald guy on Twitter who's always fucking upselling. And wait, just kind of read between the lines and say, wait, what the fuck is he actually saying here? And then go and, go and look back at, 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 at kind of older stuff. It's like, um, um, it's like that thing people say about Plato, isn't it? It's that like in philosophy, there's Plato and everything else is a footnote, you know? Mm. And it's kind of like, well, if you go back as far as you can to the source stuff, and 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 then read that, and if you can't understand it, which is totally, which is fucking understandable, because a lot of stuff you can't, then get a book about that thing. It's kind of like, you know, the thing about tulpas. Like, like, we know now that the whole idea of tulpas comes from a mistranslation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yet still, there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of people in this kind of area who are adamant that tulpas are our thing. It's, it was mistranslated. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's like and, a, and, but also purposely pushed by a very successful uh, theosophical. Of course, society, you know. It's yeah. like, um, but like, I mean, this is in everything. This is in well, not, I mean, not in everything. But I'll give you another give you another example. So it's kind of like the two examples from the Bible would be like uh, the Virgin Mary. You know, and it's like you know we're told in school growing up she was a virgin, and but she gave birth to the incarnation of God, and He died for our sins, and. Happy clappy, everything's all good. But then, you know, you ask a, a priest about it and you're like, is she really a virgin? Like, well, it doesn't mean that she didn't have sex. It just means she she had sex before marriage, but it wasn't sin. Oh, okay. Why weren't we told that? Be because mm. then you'd just all have sex without sin. Is it? Ah, wait now. But still, why weren't we told the truth? You know? Mm. And then there's the another one that's... Uh, fairly well known is that the angel Gabriel is the one who told her uh, she was uh, she was pregnant. But the thing is, is that this is this is a huge mistranslation of the of the language that it was written in because I don't remember the, the original words. Let's say it's Gabrielus or something. The Gabrielus was the uh, what was the sect Jesus were in? Jesus and Mary were part of. Um, I seen, I seen. Well, well, uh, well, that's also not true, seemingly though. So, but it's okay. Uh, but yeah. so Depending he was basically he was basically the, the astrologist, and he was the one who said, "Well, if you conceive under this star, under this night, or, or during this time, because whatever, um, you will give birth to the incarnation." And so, so Gabrielis gave her the message, but it's been translated as him being an angel when he wasn't. He was just a fucking astrologist. Right, right, right. Do you know. Loads of different things like that. that, and that's, I suppose, the, my point with the. Um, you could spend your life working with the Bible, but what, what Bible? <laughs> you know, what translation? What the thing? Yeah, exactly. And also, yeah. There's a, a presupposition in the question. I think that every starting point then ends in the same end point, which I don't think it does. Yeah. I don't think, um, ultimately, everything is all talking about the same thing. I don't think that's true at all. I, I, th think, I think as well, though, it's the kind of like it's just it's just to be a bit. Just be careful with the books you're buying. Mm. Do you know? Like, like it takes me weeks to buy a book because I, I want to find out as much about it before I read it to make sure that I'm... Well, not getting duped one, by it. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, not getting duped and I'm getting me money's worth, which is the same thing, I suppose. Do you know? Um, yeah, just, just don't... Just try and stay away from people trying to upsell you or get you on newsletters mm. or anyone like that, you know? I think as well that, the, like... <laughs> Having one book and you spend your entire life in one book is a recipe for fundamentalism as well. I mean, that, that's yeah, of course, be. yeah. And yeah. that my my thing of like, 
they're saying if someone tells me that I can't read a book, I, I I'm definitely reading it. That the thing, but like don't read books by people who only don't only read books by people you agree with. That or uh, don't only watch or yeah. listen to podcasts with people you agree with. You know, and this kind of thing of don't read. You know, people. It's like how do you know you disagree with them for a start? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like really. <laughs> you know, because someone on Facebook has told you that the thing, and then I, more than likely are terrible people. They all have, most people are in the cult. But it's like, find out for yourself. You know, because have, have, have your own thing. And you can't do that if you've only one book, if you've only one, one thing. But um, I do think you could get very, very far by just picking any book and then having that as your, well, relatively, I think. Probably Anne and Barry go to the zoo. Although maybe, <laughs> maybe. Uh, <laughs> but there is something to be said in sticking to something until the end, getting to the end of it, rather than jumping ship every time you go, ah, I, I'm, you know, I'm not getting what I want from this. Uh -huh. Which is the, kind of the big new age thing of going to a new, you know, a new um, seminar every weekend. Angels, all right, the, the angels didn't work for him, they went to Reiki him now. You know, it's that, that stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm guilty, as guilty as everyone on doing stuff like that. So, they're, like, persevere through the hard bits. Um, but sometimes when you get to the end of things, you just go, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't what I was looking for. Either. Uh, Arthur, uh, what's your predictions for 2024? Are you optimistic or pessimistic, pessimistic about the year ahead? Um, I don't know. I'm quite pessimistic, I have to say, but I don't want to add uh, any more noise uh, uh, of uh, pessimism. I, I think uh, I want to cultivate some uh, optimism, but it's getting harder to do it, personally speaking. But also, fuck predictions. They're all wrong. Oh, I'll make a prediction. I'll, I'll, I'll predict stuff that is, uh, <laughs> uh, I hope is wrong. I hope that Trump becomes president. That's my prediction. Oh, and God. That Russia, and that Russia win in Ukraine and push further into Poland. That's my predictions. <laughs> so that, that uh, uh, going with the trend that predictions are always wrong. Let's, let's yeah. hope for that. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've not. I've, I've yeah. not. Like... Geopolitics, just I've, I've no like the same stuff is just gonna happen. Um, I don't know. I think, I think, I don't think we're in as bad a position as people say. I mean, you know, like look at how much green energy is taken off so well across the world since COVID. It's just this underlying thing that's fucking happening everywhere and a lot of people kind of aren't talking about it but it's happening because it's just it's the media folks oh the bad media the mm. bad news sells you know what I mean and yeah, it's yeah, like for sure. you know oh, you know, Ireland's you know whatever 100% of Ireland's electricity on Tuesday last came from w wind you know that's that's fucking brilliant you know yeah, but yeah. no it doesn't it doesn't sell newspapers or it doesn't get you going to websites I mean you know the other day is it Toyota or something? They've they've come up with a battery that's like, yeah, you you can buy a car and you'll only have to charge this battery once every five years. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's stuff like that is. I think we're I think we're, we're we're just around the corner from really really cool things are going to happen. I don't think Chat Chat GBD is going to end the world at all. No. It, it's going to change jobs. Um, some mm. people will lose jobs. I'll probably lose mine eventually, but at the same time. Someone has to be there to clean up the chat GBT uh, mistakes because they all, <laughs> you know, if you ever put stuff into it and say, can you write, I don't know, for example, an article about you know, five foundational beliefs of Taoism or something like that. But what you get back is you get back like a college written mm. kind of paper where it's like in the ever changing yeah. fast paced yeah. world of today. In the tapestry of Taoist beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> No one talks like that, you know. And so, re but remember, <laughs> television yeah. isn't for everyone. <laughs> There's always a conclusion. And ask for a yeah, conclusion. Yeah. Shut yeah. up with your opinion. You know, write, it, write, write it in the style of uh, whoever, uh, Bob Wilson. And you get this kind of weird <laughs> yeah. kind of New York accent thing. <laughs> That's quite... Have you read any of Robert Atten Wilson? Uh, <laughs> I, yes, I, I, honest, though, but I, I think, Arthur, I think we're at a fairly... Decent moment, I think. Uh, I think good things are going to happen. It's just it's kind of our job to make sure the politicians don't or stop letting the baddies, Musk, etc., and Republicans line their pockets uh, with stuff. With stuff. But then again, I mean, Arthur Arthur lives in England, and Eng England's politics is a, well, it's always a shit show. <laughs> you know? oh. Sorry, it always has been. Yeah. 
Do you know? Is it, is it, is the uh, everywhere's getting an election this year, isn't it? Well, not everywhere, but like England's elections is this year. America's Ireland, isn't it as well this year? Is right. Poland getting an election this year? No, Poland just the goodies won there nice. recently. They shut down. They shut down the propaganda channels and everything. People oh, went brilliant. mental. There was a race. Well, like the, the, the Fox News equivalent. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. It was okay. great crack. You know, my nice. my father-in-law went fucking crazy. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. There you go. Good more uh, uh, pessimistic. I feel more pessimistic. <laughs> well, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you two other things then to look forward to this year. There's going to be uh, you have the Euros, the big football event in Germany. That's going to be massive because it's the biggest one ever. They're going to 32 teams. It's going to take over the whole summer. It's going to be great fun. And also there's the Olympics in Paris. So there's nice. two massive sporting events we have to look forward to. You know, mm-hmm. even if you're not into sport, there's something in the Olympics you're going to watch. Do you know? Yeah. It's. I don't know. It didn't last time. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm going to see James Addiction in June. I'm looking forward to that. No Dave Navarro, though. He's uh, still sick. All right. Sick. Drugs. Um, uh. I assume. Um, anyway, uh, Just Max, what's the unit for ethicalness? <laughs> and Jason says, Jesus is for Satan. And I'm quite happy with that as an answer. So. <laughs> um, have you, you, you a better answer? Than I'm me? lost. I have no idea. This is the D&D thing, isn't it? Um, kind of. Um, I, I, I don't know if it is. I just thought it was a, a question. Um, Coco Macno, uh, what is your thoughts on Kenneth Grant? Um, I know nothing about Kenneth Grant other than I uh, have, anything. Yeah, uh, I have something G- here. Gene uh, slips Kenneth Grant stuff into Ooh. me and he slips into my DMs with some Kenneth Grant every now and again. Spit um, me water. My, my main thing I know about Kenneth Grant is that I thought Kenneth Anger and Kenneth Grant were the same person for oh, fucking I had that in my for life. years. <laughs> yeah, I thought that as well. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. So that's very wrong, good. aren't we? Very wrong, yeah. very wrong. Very different people. For Kenneth, of, you know. <laughs> you have to watch out for Kenneth. Bit of a spinach um, here. I have, uh, yeah, the lovely aforementioned Gene, the world's nicest telemite, maybe the only one. The only, the world's only oh, nice telemite. is the only one. Um, Although I don't think he, he's, uh, I can spin it around, uh, Alice Crowley and the Hidden God. That's Kenneth Grant, is it? Where's my... Video gone. Yeah, uh, Alistair Crowley and Hidden God, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a good read. It's, it's basically um, basically he goes through, sorry, away from the mic. Basically, he kind of goes through a lot of Crowley's teachings and is like, look, Crowley said this, but <laughs> what he meant was this because he got this wrong, and uh, you know when people take down Crowley, I really like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I enjoy you know, that. That's a, yeah, I really enjoy that. that when he's taking down a peg or or, or four because you know he was, a, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he was just a horrible human being. He was just terrible. So you know when people, um, yeah, take uh, now look, he doesn't he doesn't rip it apart and and because mm. you're right, Kenneth Grant was a telemite too, even though he set mm. up his own ty- Typhonian, Ty- Typhonian, yeah, yeah. So it's like a parallel thing, isn't it? Like still telemite, but it's just it's not. A, yeah, it's kind of, I I right? suppose it's, it's like um, Rudolf Steiner theosophy thing. Isn't right, it? like okay, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. So like, it's yeah. still pointing at the same thing, but it's like, no, well, poor old Al was wrong about this. But of course, Crowley was going to be wrong about it because he was such a fucking prolific writer. There's no way he could have gotten everything everything correct. So, um, yeah, I like that. It's quite a lot of mucus mentioned. <laughs> right, okay. And you know what that's pointing at, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, you with yeah, your tantra yeah. books. <laughs> so that's yeah. quite a... Yeah. They're an interesting couple of pages, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But uh, no, it's good. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's worth reading. If yeah, if 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 you get into them, it's worth reading. Um, uh, yeah, I liked it. But now, other than that, I, I, you would probably know more about Grant than I would. I just read that book. I know a little bit. Well, about well, that, that's one book more than I have read about Kenneth Grant. So yeah. therefore, yeah, no, um, yeah, I don't we really know? I, I, I must do, but I mean, you have to get. Can't get around to everyone. It's like, I, I can't wait to get into Pink Floyd. I, will I do it? Will I have my time to do that? Will that happen? I want to. I'm trying to get into the Rolling Stones at the minute. I'm enjoying that, but it's like, yeah. you know, it's just getting around to these things. Um, But he's on the list. Like, he'll be, I'll, I'll get to it eventually. Next life. My next life. I'll hang out with Kenneth Grant. Um, Stephen Hanrahan. Stefan, maybe? Sorry. Uh, if you were to start your spiritual journey over, what would you do first? I thought it was Steph Ranna. Mm. <laughs> Stefanra. Answers on a postcard. Han. <laughs> Han is Stefanra's surname. 
Steph Hannah. Steph Hannah. <laughs> Hannah. Steph Hanrahan. So Stephen Hanrahan. <laughs> Stephen. This is a question from John. If you were to start the first story over, what would you do first? I think there's, there's two kind of ways you can answer it. If it's, uh, what would you recommend to someone starting out? And uh, what mistakes do you think you've made? Yeah, you know, yeah. but it, like, is the question like knowing what you know now? What, what would you, what would you, yeah, what would you I, not I, waste, I, waste I, your time I, on? Yeah, I'm going to say knowing what you know now. What would you not do? Um, but you see, you're changing timelines there. If if I said, oh well, I, sh I shouldn't have read X book when I was 15, but you know, I only know that because I read it. <laughs> so if you if you don't read it, then I'd go, oh, I must read that book. <laughs> Meant to be good. Um, I don't think I'd really change anything. The way things are, the way things are. What? That's that's just the nature of it. Like I don't think I could have accelerated it or slowed it down by doing anything different. Like really, do you? What's your thoughts? No, because like. Um, like there was a few moments there where I was like committed to Buddhism and then I realised nah it's not that then it was Hinduism I was like ah that's the fucking closest ah yeah. and then it was and then it's Taoism I was like okay yeah that, that that seems to be it but then there was also all the chaos magic stuff before that yeah. as well and Enochian and stuff and that, uh, kind of oh, mad mad fucking shit trying what would I try what would I try? What would I try? What would I try? Oh, sorry, not what would I try. What was it? What would you do first? What would you do first? <clears throat> I don't know. I think probably the chaos magic way of fuck around and find out is probably the best because it's what's going to, you're going to find out what you like in that way rather than say, you know, spending five years as a Buddhist and then realizing, ah, shit. What do you mean nothing exists? That's bullshit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then trying Vedanta for a couple of years and then going, ah, you're very close, but uh, you're not quite right as well. Um, <laughs> your your masses are too long. I'm bored. Um, <laughs> you know, um, oh God, it's it's a hard one. Because, I mean, when I read that first, I was like, like I was like thinking, okay, I would have done, I would have just gone straight, straight for the HGA stuff. But the thing is, is that probably wouldn't have, worked and you would have been pissing into the wind because you wouldn't have been ready for it do you know mm. so I don't know it's kind of like what I'm trying to say is that like it's trying to uh, trying to find your way but also just fucking remain impatient as well like okay you have to have a kind of a goal like I want to get to there you know I want to be a monk or I want to be a union with God, or I want that's the thing I want. Okay, and then, okay, right. How do I kind of break that down to see what's going to get me there? Not necessarily in the quickest way, but maybe the safest way in some of these things, you know? Um, mm. That makes sense? Yeah, you yeah, know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I yeah. could just kind of look at it more. That's what I'm trying to say. So while I took a scattergun approach, it would have been better for me to write down the thing I wanted and then say, right, what are the five or ten ways I think I can get there and then just kind of cross them off as they work or don't. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Sound so like it's fucking self-help bullshit, isn't it? Have a goal and yeah. an ambition and, you know, wake up every day at 5 a.m. and snort egg yolks. <laughs> um, <laughs> if I would start my journey, like to answer, I have two answers. If I would start my journey over again, what would I do first? I'd do exactly what I did first. I'm quite happy with how it all went out. It's That's the way it was meant to be. But if you ask me what you should do first, then I'd say start with meditation. Just meditate more. Mm. Or you know, get get into a practice of meditation. And try, I suppose, coming from what you're saying, is don't persist or insist in having a, a path. Just be open to all of it. Whatever mm -hmm. you know, and which is the glory of the chaos magic approach. I mean, there's so much <clears> problems <throat> with it, and it, but it's just like be open. Yeah. Don't don't be insistent on being right. <laughs> you know that's yeah. That's the other thing as well. It's like it's like you know when you read, say, your man. Um, uh, what's your man that talks really quickly? Uh, the Buddhist guy, um, bald doctor, Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> Ingram. Ingram. Um, yeah. like Bitcoin. <laughs> True story, true story. Is that, is that is true, isn't it? It is, yeah. True we're, not, we're not, we're not, okay. Um, uh, people are going to be asking him what's that. So apparently he was gifted a lot of Bitcoin and that's how he got yeah. rich. Um, because um, he let a guy um, stay in a shed for uh, a couple of months. Right. And that was <laughs> why he got returned. Fair play to him. Fair play. All the money Brilliant. in the world. Lucky. Very good. Um, 
Yeah. So like when you, when, when you read his books and you see that there's all these lists and there's like, oh shit, I have to get to this before I get to that stage. And that's this, that's this, that's this, that's this, that's this, that stage. Um, I, I don't agree with any of that at all. I think everyone's spiritual journey is is individual. And yeah, I absolutely agree with that. You are not going to have the same experiences as your guru. You're not. You know, you might have similar stuff, but and you it's might. not the same. And, it's, and trying to place yourself on a map is sometimes helpful, mostly not. Yeah, mostly not. I would, yeah. I would agree with yeah. that as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I think everyone's experiencing things differently. And I mean, even the same things differently. So yeah, it's, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Man, me and you can watch the same match and come away with it with completely oh, yeah. different <laughs> reads on and it. Bo- and both valid. Both, yeah, and bo- both could valid. be exactly correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, for example, that's a penalty. That wasn't a penalty. Well, the penalty yeah. was given, so it wasn't a penalty. Yeah, but it yeah. shouldn't have been a penalty. penalty well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there was contact. You know. Yeah, yeah but that yeah. means he dived and he cheated. No, no, well, I mean, there's contact in the box, so, you know, you, you got to take advantage. For, you know, we watched the yeah. same fucking football game. We had the same... You know, anyway, oh, you know what I'm getting l- listen, listen to a piece of music and you go, that is shit. And I go, yeah, that's the yeah, wonderful yeah, piece of music yeah. I've ever had. Touched me on the soul in a place of power to my soul that I didn't know existed. Speaking and of which, I mean, yeah. I, I totally forgot Metallica had an album out last year. Oh, did and it's, oh, they, it's they, amazing. They, yeah, no, I, yeah, because I, I listened to it for about a week or two when it came out. Yeah, it is really Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, so yeah. good. Yeah, it's the first, oh. first good thing they've done in the while. Although I didn't hate the, the last stuff, but it's... Death Magnetic I thought it was okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, you know, I really don't enjoy the singles coming out and all that stuff as well. I thought yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, and Braxis, what opinion do you have that's wrong, but you still stand by it? Um, I'm sure there's loads, but the, the one I was <laughs> talking about when, when I heard it was that, that Ninth Gate is a great film. <laughs> it's a terrible film, but I love it. <laughs> so yeah, Do that, people not like Ninth Gate? Everyone likes it. Well, no, huh? no. It's, it, it's, yeah, but it's not a good movie. It's like mm. dumb and stupid and all, but it's brilliant. I love it. It's one of my favourite movies, but it, it's like... If you want to break it down, it's not. It's not. Um, maybe I'm wrong with that. It's very cheesy, but I suppose oh, I like that's, it that's great. Mm. Yeah, it's, but I mean, it's it's like it's so plays into you know the cultist thing of what you know a ceremony to to, to lead to Lucifer, uh-huh. but also book collecting. <laughs> you know, cool, you know, good looking man is from the mid forties. <laughs> you know, all this stuff. Tommy's I mean, sitting there. I, love I, about it? Shoot, they made a film about me before. I... <laughs> They've seen my future. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Seen only. Uh, unfortunately, I don't look like Johnny Depp. I have his book collection. <laughs> uh, fat Depp. That's uh, yeah, yeah. The Ninth Gatto. Ninth Gatto cake. Ram, 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 ram. What opinion do you have that's wrong? Ah, uh, no. I'll just get the channel cancelled if I come out with the stuff that I was thinking. To be honest. <laughs> It's like, oh, you actually, yeah. But the, you don't think they're wrong, though. I think the question is, you actually don't think is right, but you hold it rather than you think everyone else is wrong. About them. That's what opinion do you have that's wrong? Well, wrong is in inverted commas there, so it's yeah. kind of like it's seen by someone else as wrong. Well, I mean, there's the whole epigenetics thing of our genes. I think that's fucking fascinating. Do you know, it's like, like we've spoken about this before, so it's not going get, to get us in trouble. Um, no, but it's like we know that there's a gene for our eye colours. But like... Yeah. Our eye colours can change. Like my, my one of my kids is born blue eyes. And, yeah, most kids you know, are, aren't they? Yeah, yeah a lot so, are. So and and yeah. they change. And then there's like uh, you know, like they have located the gene for like the way that people can roll their R's, like Spanish speakers. Yeah, right, okay. Like, that's fucking fascinating. Yet they cannot find a gene for uh, things like uh, uh, your your sexuality. Mm. So that means what? But they have found five and if you're born with these sorry everyone's born with these five but if three of them kind of switch on then you're not even 100% going to be right um, of a different sexual orientation that's but you're more likely to be right i think that's i think that's mad mm. i think it's fascinating because it's like i don't believe i don't believe i don't believe we're born blank slates because we're not like we come in yeah, with our clearly, inheritances yeah, yeah. and like, and, and, but like you know, like hundred years ago, um, yeah, one hundred and twenty years ago, this that psychologists believed everyone was born blank slate and you could teach them and anything and they would form their character through their experiences and we know that that's not the case now. But still, there's this like huge thing that like, gets massive. Our our sexuality it's such an important. It's, probably the, one of the most important facets of our life, you know? 
but like we don't know <laughs> where it comes from. It's like fucking hell, that's mad, you know. So um, yeah, the, but the whole gene thing. I don't know if I'm wrong here. about it, but it's like I, I just yeah. think it's a f- fascinating thing, you know. Um, in that we're expecting to be able to, tr- uh, you know, like copyright or trademark genes and all this kind of thing, and then when it, finally the genome sequence did get um, fully sequenced. They realised, oh yeah, there's way less than this than we thought. There's, not, there's very little, you know, actionable stuff that we can turn uh-huh. into money from a capitalist point okay, of view. Okay, into money. Yeah. So, which is, you know, of course. That's I'm, sure, I'm sure you've seen that guy that copyrighted all all sounds. Yeah, brilliant. What a legend. Oh, what a Good genius. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well done. So everything from 2019 onwards, uh, any song that's written, no one can see you for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant, so, isn't uh, it? Uh, every, every melody has been kept. Brilliant. What a legend. Yeah. Um, it's just the eye thing is interesting because there's reports of people with split personalities whose eye colour change from the personalities. All right. Which is really weird. Wait, no. Like that, that's repeat not, that, repeat that. So you know with split personalities where you have yeah, yeah, yeah. someone who thinks I'm Frank and then I'm Sarah, whatever. That, that's a terrible way to describe it, but you know what it is. But the eye colour can change between personalities. Like that, when, as they're having an episode, like... Yeah, 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 seemingly. Like I, up, I, I, I remember hearing that going, that sounds like something that isn't true. And then looking into it and go, oh no, actually, like it's not every time and it's not, it's not a thing huh. that has, it is a thing that c- can happen. That's mad. Hmm. Someone look it up and tell me I'm wrong, but yeah. the last time I looked it up, it, 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 it seems legit enough. There's uh, another one as well that I need to, I need to look into more because G- Gabor Mate says it in his book that there aren't, there's no, there's no genetic indicator of ADHD. However, there is, there is research that says there is um, but then there's also research on that research that says that that research isn't good enough. So, so yeah. no one, we don't know yet, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which but do you is, think it's uh, the proper answer rather than have you know, like just go, we don't know. That, I think that's okay. I think yeah, I think I, say, think I don't know. Yeah. I think that would be the best thing, and just say, yeah, look, we don't know yet, but we're we're trying to fucking find out, you know. Yeah. I mean, I suppose yeah. that's the thing when people look to the science, they go, no, what's the fucking answer? <laughs> you know, and have to go, I don't know. Oh, all science is rubbish. Then <laughs> <on the show." laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah, you know, um, Katrin. Thing as well, like I don't, I don't want to Sorry. annoy people, anyone. Like I'm, I'm interested in this stuff, and I'm, I'm willing to learn more. So, like, if if you're t- yeah, I mean, shouting, I mean, if you're shouting at your earphones now, <laughs> saying Spud, you fucking wanker, ah, you're wrong. Send Spud, me stuff. I, I want to learn. Spud is only asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them, man. I'm not one of them. Yeah. Um, strange, strange. You can ask this question, but not that question. Strange. Yeah. Strange. Like I'm, I'm interested in this stuff, and I'm not just fucking. I'm not just it's not just opinions coming into my head now like I've sat down and tried to learn about this stuff as much as I can but I'm 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 open and I want to learn more well hopefully you do uh, or not maybe you're right I, 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 don't, I don't know <laughs> anything about the subject enough to ha- have an opinion I don't know I don't know I don't, uh, I don't know Catherine uh, here's one apologies if you've addressed this before what do you think intuition is is it a connection to a deity a connection to your own higher self a literal sixth sense or something else Um. Is it just shutting up and getting out of your way of your own brain? It depends. Like, I think there's a couple of different things that can be, like intuition can be and what people mean by it. You'd have to kind of def- define for your individual self what you mean by intuition. Um, because sometimes anxiety can be mistaken for uh, intuition. Uh-huh, oh, I have yeah. a bad feeling about this. I'm not doing it. No, you're just anxious. You know, uh, so it, you have to kind of it's not yeah, and you can spend that. months, months wondering, wondering about why you're anxious about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even, even I, I, I've often had me is that I w- didn't realise I was anxious about something until after it's over and I'm going, oh, that's that whole thing has just disappeared from my body. <laughs> I yeah. had no idea that 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 was affecting me in in, in that kind of a way. Um, but I suppose from a, a creative, more I could speak to about it with regard to intuition and that kind of whole thing of, um, you know trying to listen to whatever's coming or whatever. It's, it's, who was talking about it recently? Um, again, this idea of, I was watching the Michael Jackson documentary of recording uh, Thriller 40 years on. It's a really good documentary. It's worth watching. Very interesting. Um, and he's talking about it, in a, which is so many people says, and I've said it a million times, um, that he doesn't write songs. He says they're fully formed, already there, and I'm trying to remember them, or I'm trying, you know, they're left. Okay. Them. The yeah. Jimi Hendrix thing, yeah. Yeah, and the Beatles, John Lennon talks about it. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's it's like, it's and I, I we've talked about it. We've both experienced that kind of thing, that there's this kind of, no, that's not it. You know, if you, but it's allowing yourself to get out of the way of it in the sense of being like a, 
the the midwife or a conduit or, or whatever. All yeah, these yeah, things. yeah. Oh God. So I mean, with that, I'd say there's the same thing with intuition or whatever. Is that it? Whatever that is, whether it's your soul trying to talk to you or whether it's you know idea space trying to manifest or something like that. Um, but it involves getting out of your way of it, which is the only way I suppose you can also distinguish between anxiety and intuition, or excitement and intuition, or you know, you know, bringing an emotion into it. I suppose if you're having an emotional response to an intuition, it's probably not an intuition. Maybe. Yeah, that, that would make sense to me. Yeah. 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 So I think, I, hmm, I think intuition though is hmm, well for me, it's just that it's. Something that just kind of comes from well, no, that sounds stupid because every thought comes from nowhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's that it just. But it noticeably comes from nowhere. Yeah, it's it's more. Yeah, it's like it forcibly forcibly just kind of announces itself because it's like with most of our thoughts, it's a cause and effect thing. Like you know what you're thinking about the argument with your brother, for example. Mm. You know, you know yeah, why yeah, that because yeah. it's on your mind kind of thing. But then. When something comes in and it's like, I don't know, like a, a great line of dialogue for your for your story, and it just hits you when you're out walking the dog or having a shower or whatever, and you're like, boom, okay, that's okay. intuition for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. where's yeah. it come from? Uh, deep, down, <laughs> deep down, deep down, deep, deep, deep down in the subconscious, collective unconscious, whatever you call it, but which is also the same fucking thing as a. I don't know, divine or, or or HGA or whatever name you want to give it, God of the yeah. cosmos. Um, I don't. Know, I I think that's yeah. yeah. And there's probably levels to it too. Some of it's from God. Some of it's from your own brain. Some of it's from you mm. know who knows, like or whatever. Um, that's it's a brilliant question, and it's 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 fascinating, absolutely fascinating. I think uh, what I is wrote, this, what is uh, that thing? You wrote something today about um about um. Uh, kind of the, the 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 best hobbies that we all should kind of be doing to to, to make ourselves a little bit happier. And um, I wrote a good bit about the, trying to do artistic ones because they're um they're the ones that are the most likely to induce a, a flow state, and that's when you're kind of living in a um kind of like you're living in intuition because there's just like time is lost. You're so engrossed in what you're doing, mm. and you're just doing it for for the sake of doing it and more and more ideas can kind of come into you. Do you know, it's kind of like, you know, you can start off, you know, you're whittling a soldier, but then you're like, no, actually, if I change this thing, shit, I got a fucking shit hot goddess here and it's way cooler than what I set out to do. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's just trust in the process of it kind of thing. I hate using these words because they're not, they sound so, they sound like platitudes, but I, 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 I genuinely mean them. Yeah, you know? no, cliches are cliches though because they're true. I mean, they yeah. have to be said in that. Um, one way I've, I've kind of find it um, to get into flow state is to find some way to distract the, the left hand, left, right brain. Um, so like if you're drawing, say for instance, listen to um, an audiobook. I find that uh -huh. because then it switches that part of your brain off. That's doing that. And then the, all the rest is just available to you as well. It's the same as um, driving. You know, that, that you're, you're being occupied with something like that or whatever. I find that can be very helpful. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things that sometimes, you, just, you know, you just have to get on with the work and hope it shows up. You know, yeah, well, you, yeah, you that can't, too. You can't, yeah. Ju you can't just go right flow state. I'm not going to start until you kick in. Sometimes you just have to start yeah. typing. And, it's a Hemingway's know, oh, thing. This is right, <laughs> right drunk and edits over. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know. Yeah, all right. Okay. Don't become an alcoholic, but like, yeah. you know, it's. Stephen King um, once spent your sentence at the 1970s <laughs> on cocaine. It worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> yeah. But it's. But no, but I, but I think I think we're getting at, at the same thing. It's kind of like, you know, do your art thing and be in it only of itself. Don't be thinking about, oh, I'm going to make a hundred of these and sell them on Etsy and I'm going to yeah, become yeah, rich yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to be snorting coke off the hookers in fucking Brazil in, you know, three weeks' time. No. Like, just fucking like enjoy it or just do the art for doing yeah, the art and the being, other stuff will come yeah being prepared for the thing to happen like I, I know everyone hates you too but that when they're that stuff when they're in the studio recording acting baby and they're trying to work on mysterious ways and it's not happening or whatever and they can literally feel this other song coming in and it's one and it's recorded it's fascinating or whatever but they know right here it is drop everything get to this mm -hmm. and it's that but it only happens because they were in the room 
playing yeah. been there for two weeks yeah. doing that trying the thing you know it didn't yeah. they just walked into the room one doesn't arrive you know no. and I think yes yeah, so let's just get to it <coughs> excuse me not COVID maybe who knows anymore <laughs> um Matheus Figueiredo um, does the SAG, which is the Brazilian for the HGA, I learned, uh, is it uh, yourself or an external entity? <sighs> I'll leave that one to you, but you who has the, the knowledge and conversation, well, what is it? Uh, the way I put it to p people is that, like, what we are is a freckle. I was going to say something rude, I won't. You're just a freckle on the skin of your HGA. That's all you are. You know, and for all your awesomeness and for all the glory and wonder and beauty and hardship and chaos of your life, that's all you are, you know? And you are, but you're part of something so much fucking bigger and much more powerful and beautiful. Is it an external uh, deity uh, in the sense of, say, <coughs> excuse me, like the theosophy thing that it is another being that you're kind of in an apprenticeship with or is it fundamentally you or is that an answer? I don't think it's any of them really. I think yeah. I think it's the, f the freckle thing. It's like, I mean, what's a freckle to you? Do you know, like look at your hands, there's freckles on, there's mm. on your hands, like what is it? It's part of you. Okay. But this is all it is really. It's not like you're, I'm not, I'm not external to it. Like it's mm. part of me, but that's, and that's and you think that you as, uh, as an entity are, are insignificant to the HGA in the same way? No, 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 no. I don't. I don't think you're insignificant because if it, you know, the, like it's our freckles that make us make us unique, isn't it? You know, they make us what we look like, what we are. Yeah, but see your freckle on the back that I know of it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, if, maybe when you're doing doggy style. <laughs> take, you know, take photos of, you know when you're doing porn and take photos of your back yeah yeah, yeah she likes you know when you're doing that yeah. <laughs> yeah. it might be um, something unique on your on, on, yeah, that, that someone else can see you know because um, that might be something worth exploring maybe not all your characteristics are for you they might be for other people you know yeah, why yeah, not yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know like you know like you know, say for example I don't know like you're I don't know pick a fucking big band member or guitarist and they're like their whole life is slash their whole life is like being this amazing guitarist and these successful rock bands but like to his kids he's this like great dad mm. you, you know and he's like, and he's like I'm not a great dad I'm just a fucking guitar player well now I don't know anything about slash I know uh, he has he has That's a cool hat yeah I, I don't know you know so I don't know yeah, hmm. yeah. that's my opinion I, I, don't I, I don't know I don't know uh, final quest from Bat have we manifested self-fulfilling prophecies through dystopian novels and films over the last century? And how do we switch the popularity to genres about solutions and positive outcomes without people finding it too boring and woke if it lacks all the baddies and Armageddon type scenarios? So I'll rephrase to make sure I'm getting this question right. The reason that we're in the state we are now is because of the stories we've been telling ourselves for the last while. Um, and if we change our stories, do we change the future? Um, my answer is I don't know. But um, because I think, we're, we're, like I've talked before, I think we're, there's always an a looming apocalypse. Like there's always been horror. And I, I don't think the uh, the parabities of the human existence over the, the last couple of thousand years even, or even previous, had anything to do with films. But maybe we were always telling shit stories to each other. I don't know. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I yeah. do think though that if you, that the only way you're going to change the world is by changing the story you ta talk about it. I think that is true. Um, but whether that's possible in one sense, like, you know, it's like ideas are the only thing that change the world fundamentally at the end of the day. And so if we have bad ideas about who we are, say like since I suppose the enlightenment, whatever, where we have this kind of push to the individual being insignificant and, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things and all that. So it's, it's kind of disempowering. I'm not saying this is true, but this is one, one way you could look at it. Um, this kind of disempowering belief, uh, you know, that it's um, your life's kind of futile, worthless because, you know, it's there's, there's no afterlife, there's no divinity, there's no nothing. All of this is just, you know, go out, do your job, fucking. Yeah, mechanical, rational. Mechanical, yeah. go to the factory, mm -hmm. fucking, that's it, whatever. Probably not a great st uh, story to be telling ourselves for mental health. You know, um, 
and whether it's the truth of the world or not, and I think you could tell better story. Like that's why myths, I suppose, are so powerful because it's not necessarily needing for them to be historically accurate. It's 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 what is this doing to us as people if we if we live by these kind of mythological tales of these kind of you know heroes and all this kind of stuff. So I suppose I agree with it that if we tell better stories, we would. But I, I don't know. There seems something inevitable about. You know the looming apocalypse that there's always that because otherwise I think that's part of the nature of the place in that there's a there's a squeeze of some description that hmm. leads to you know that so I think if you don't have the squeeze you don't get the diamond you know yeah. but I also I think you're getting into well, no, you know, I mean, things you're, happening you're, for you know, to teach there, your lesson like, something yeah respond there because like okay look at look at like the most ancient religions we have like the Assyrians and the ancient Egyptians who were like the most kind of like I, I, I would presume the ancient Egyptians because their religion because their influence was so long that their religion was the longest of our religions mm. in human history and that's just a death cult you know their, mm. their whole life was about like um um uh, we yeah, we're just trying to be decent because in the, in the next one it's it's going to be better, and you know obviously the Christians have ran with that as well, and um, yeah, we do love a good death cult, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we do love a good death cult, but at the same time, no, I don't, I don't agree with what she, what she's saying at all, because yeah. um, Beth, um, because um, look at say the prevalence of all this uh, serial killer documentaries. Jesus fucking hell, Netflix is just full of them. Now at the minute, and um, even though you know I do love like a good the Zodiac movie is just it's amazing. It's an amazing film. Um, I'm not so into the documentaries, Jeffrey Dahmer's and all that stuff. Although what was the other one? Is a Headhunter? I don't know. I don't watch any of them. That that was a good, but that's a drama. That's a drama. It's not a not a, doc, not a documentary. Man, such, no, but the, the, man, the, yeah, that's yeah. really good. But anyway, um, no. But the point is that um, if if we actually look at crime data, murder data, since it's been um, started. The problem is, is that it looks like there's more murders than ever, ever before, but it's just it's because we have larger populations than ever before. It's the same thing with like crime data. Crime data looks like it's out of control because there's just all these crimes being committed. But the problem is, is that well, we've just too many fucking laws now, mm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it yeah. looks like there's loads of things, and it's like the you know, like for example, uh, rape figures are up almost everywhere every year, and but it's like, oh, that's terrible, there's more rapes. And it's like, no, actually, there isn't more rapes. Rape is just a thing that unfortunately fucking happens for some fucking reason. We can't really figure out why. But the reason that the numbers are higher every year is because thankfully more and more people are actually fucking reporting it, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, and it's the same with murder. If, if, you, if you look at murder data, it's like, no, the, actually, actually murder rates per our population have consistently been going down. So... We're not manifesting more. If if you take my example of this, of the uh, our obsession with murder TV, um, then no, we are not manifesting more, more more murders because if we look at the hard data, then we see no, there are actually less murders. It's just that there's, percentage wise, percentage wise, more, there's more yeah. there's more people, but percentage wise, where we are actually killing less people. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So no, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's. I, 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 no, sorry, Beth. <laughs> yeah, no, I, and it's like, it's, it's like, it's, it's the, um, better angels of our nature. Stephen, what's his name, wrote that book back in the, the bits, which talks all about that, that the, it actually, if you look at the stuff, crime and all this has, uh, gone around. It's not Stephen Batchelor, that's the Buddhist guy. Stephen Pinker? Stephen Pinker, that guy. Right. Um, um, and he talks, that's a good, if, you know, that pretty much, you know, if you want to look at what, uh, Spud's talking about there, that, that, that's one. Although people, have issues with that book as well. I haven't read it, so I can't can't speak to it. Other than that's the book that's usually touted. Right. People that talk about these things, um, that they're saying that maybe it's a bit too um, looking through more too much of a positive lens or something like that. Yeah, it, it's it's still it's still it's, you know it's the, the actual statistics and all that are still in it. Like I mean, he's not lying about. Um, Where is the question again? Just so I make sure that I haven't yeah. misunderstood it. Or... Is the, the media we're consume, if it's assuming, has it led to, so if, like the dystopian sci-fi, has it led to us been having a dystopian, no. Have we switched um, to popular? <clears throat> well, 
Well, I don't know, Beth. I mean, like, if you look at, say, like the self-help industry, like that, that's, that was worth, I was reading, writing about this the other day. Well, that was worth $13.2 billion last year. Wow. That's, that's messed up. <laughs> so messed up, mm. you know. Um, Absolutely unregulated. <laughs> say whatever yeah, you want. Mm. Yeah. But like, and so, I mean, if, it, the sort of popularity of genres and solutions of positive outcomes that is there <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know so um, I don't know Beth maybe you're just read, <laughs> reading too many dystopian novels <laughs> you know I, I don't know I, but I don't I don't I don't know I don't I don't think books I don't think the books we read and, and, and the movies we watch um, are self self-fulfilling <laughs> or are fulfilling well, another, prophecies another, another way to look at it is this way is that it, rather than um seeing as being a, a self-fulfilling prophecy is that because of these books and because we have um, people, like especially if whatever was going on in the 40s, 50s and 60s with sci-fi, um, we're able to um, look at what the future might bring, whatever. And rather than we have fulfilled it because of that, it's like, oh, we can recognise it now because of these sci-fi, mm -hmm. because of these stories we've told ourselves, that when it appears in the world, we go, oh, look, there it is, where we mightn't have been able to do that. We just thought, well, that's just the nature of the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recognise dystopia. We can go, well, let's let's be, actually be concerned about AI because of all the stories we've been telling ourselves uh -huh. rather than creating it. It's like, oh, no, we have to, we, we've we thought about this. We, we've we written stories about it. We've discussed this. We've what, made films, made media, but we all, we, we have a better understanding of what AI could be than if it just arrived out of nowhere mm -hmm. with no literature to, to, to yeah, yeah, to yeah. That's, it. Yeah, that's an interesting point. It's kind of like, well, mm -hmm. because, you know, Philip K. Dick wrote about this stuff and gave us the worst version of it. Yeah. You know, let's make sure that that doesn't that happen. That doesn't happen, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, and, we, and here's a path, we can recognise it. So, right, you have to, just, to, to jump off at whatever stage. It's like 1984. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if that's not written... You don't have the, the the case where you can go around and go, oh, this is very big brother, because you don't have the reference. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's just that, oh, this is just life. There's camera, you know. But we could, it's <laughs> in the in the cultural milieu or whatever that word is that you know that it's it's part of our collective understanding, and we can recognise these things. So if you want to put a positive spin on it, but I do I do think if you tell better stories, you, you, certainly from a mental health point of view, that it, it's better for you. But I, it's like. I'm not sure where the level of manifestation of that actually is. I mean, of course, there's, a, there's an effect of, you know, everything starts with a thought. If you have a better thought, then you manifest a better thing. But I, I'm not quite sure where the cutoff line yeah. is, that, you know, like, because I was clearly, I, I, I believe in magic, but also I don't believe that you can sit Who's in the couch and get a new car by thinking about it. I don't Who's think the, that, but... Uh, also well, I, can, like, I can't do it. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's what it's no, like. That. No. But like, also as well, it's kind of like, do you know, all of these books are... They're all, you know, PKD's books. They're all, they're all the hero's journey, just a, a different take on it. But and mm -hmm. the the background is is the sci-fi stuff. You know what I mean? Like what yeah, what he's yeah, interested yeah, yeah. in is 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 the human in it. But also, if there's like a robotic kind of thing, then it's kind of like okay, well, where is the line between the human and and, and the robot kind of thing? That's what he was yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, obsessed yeah. with. So it's kind of like, I suppose it's that. To be careful of um, seeing the wood for the trees, kind of thing. It's kind of like, well, okay, so this is in a sci-fi setting, and this is telling us, and I think this is telling me about this. Well, actually, no, it's about the journey of, it's about the, it's, it's the hero's journey of, yeah, kind of overcoming thing, obstacles. Like most dystopian stuff ends with the hero winning. Yeah. You know, you know, or for, well, unless it's really dystopian, but uh, you know that it is, as you say, the hero's journey. It's the progression through it. So if we are manifesting that, then we're manifesting the progression through this yeah. as well, which is the backbone of all, all of these stories and these uh, these things. I hope that's the answer you wanted, Beth. I don't want to annoy you by like disagreeing with you, <laughs> you know. But at the same time, that's kind of what I think. Yeah, no, Beth's cool, and she's uh, you know, Beth, a long time. Um, at this stage, um, she has her own Facebook group. If uh, anyone, Wiley Coyotes, uh, if anyone wants to check it out. Um, all the questions. Anything you would like to add or go back to uh, on any of them that now that you've that had a uh, longer to think about? No, oh, just tell us a bit about your, what you're what you're doing um, soon with the journey and, and the gateway stuff. Oh yeah, stuff. so there was uh, so years ago after so it's probably about 2017, 2018. Maybe we did a thing on Patreon where it was a year long kind of shadow working introspection. 
kind of look at uh, all our shitty behaviour with a team for every month. So like one would be about, um, you know, like the inner critic, one would be about honesty, one is about uh, anxiety um, and that kind of thing. But it involves like, well, take all that stuff, you know, and do the thing that I, I, I'm, I'm all right with, you know, like or good with, with servitors and having like that kind of focus and that kind of, so you have a, a team, you have something that you can invoke or banish or something like that. And it worked quite well. And we did it. Um, there was a couple, a couple of instances during it of uh, very much uh, a, a point is kind of where things happened that, you know, you, you can't really um, justify as just being normal. One in particular was that I was doing a daily diary and there was something in it that I said, I, um, I need to do, and, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know, I knew it some, was fixing a relationship issue. Um, and then I was, I was avoiding it, avoiding it. And I opened up the Word document one day and everything, this was weeks, weeks, possibly months later, during the, everything, every entry had been deleted back to that point. And I hadn't done that, clearly. That was just opening it up. And I was like, oh. right, yeah. okay, okay then. <laughs> you know, and, and of course it was, it was all relevant to the thing. So it's, it's just starting that again with taking what I've, what we learned and what I learned from um, doing it the first time, kind of changing it, updating the some of the artwork I wasn't completely happy with. It starts off with looking for a guide and I have a, I have a different kind of appreciation of that um, that I want to do and uh, this time. So it's just, it's a... Explain that to me. So you're invoking what, like HDA kind of thing? Well, you see, that's that's the thing. The first the first time we did it was a particular, go find whatever guide you, you want. There wasn't a particular guide. So I'm kind of, yeah. I have one set of words that it could be a particular guide for everyone doing this or you can pick your own thing which you know one or the other so like you uh, could create your own server well i i have day. created a guy thing but i i it's i i have until monday to decide if to work done on it so it's just whatever i i've the i've the but like every, everyone should, should make them. everyone should make their own not use yours yeah that's what we did first time and and I, I i but some people didn't get one that's the issue so i wanted to go well if you don't get one there is one but i also then don't want people to think that you have to take this one so i don't know it's something i'll have to, to, to discuss with everyone but i think you probably should well, i mean you, you would have one it just wouldn't have spoken appeared to you. yeah yeah or whatever yeah. Yeah, or thing but um and it's mostly the first month's mostly a pre preparation for people who aren't doing daily meditation or aren't doing you know, your, your active imagination and all, all that kind of and stuff so what's it look into, like into every day then are you picking a 40 a, a card no it's a new it's a, it's a new servitor for each there's 12 servitors for uh Forest that were all done back in the day, and um, so it's a month rather than so it's daily meditation. Uh -huh. There's daily kind of goals. Like one of them's a bit, one of the thing is about it's called the Shanaki. That's the the servitor, and it's about you know about telling stories. And it's the whole kind of one of the big things is you, you don't lie. You aim for a whole month to not lie about anything. Wow. Yeah. Um. <laughs> even small lies, whatever, or you know, within reason. Like you're, you're, but be aware that when you're doing it, you know. And one thing I found out is I very. I'm, no, I lie way less than I, than I used to because once you become very aware of it and what you're doing and you kind of catch yourself in the middle of, like, say, an argument or something, you go, oh, I'm manipulating this. And it makes you feel kind of uh -huh. shit. And it's, it's a very interesting kind of thing to do. So it's uh, it's it's that kind of stuff. It's like, I mean, it's, it's it's tough. It's tough if you take it seriously, but I mean, it's a, you don't have to take it as seriously as you want. But the, the more you put into it, the more you, you're... So you spend a full it. month with each one of these people. Yeah. So it's like a team for the month. So the, the, the one of them would be honestly say with the Shanaki and telling the stories you tell and the kind of that kind of stuff. Another one, one it's all about. Uh, it's called the bully, and it's all about the inner criticism and all the stuff that you say. To yourself. The um, the ghost is about anxiety and letting the, the apocalypse happen. Just you know, stop worrying about stuff. Just let it happen. You know, if the world's if the sky's falling down, let the sky fall down, and then but bring that into every situation that you're involved in. Um, and I mean, it's not. The goal is to understand yourself a bit better. It's not to yeah. have the end of it where you're fully awakened yeah. or, you know, you're a perfect person. You're going to come out of a feeling being probably a bit more aware of, you know, your ass, assholic tendencies. And that's kind of it. Like the, that's the, good the, though. The, yeah. Um, and I think this time, because I, the last time it was, I wasn't kind of happy enough with how it was all put together. Because how can you be? You have to run through these things to actually mm -hmm. see it. But uh, I, I might put it together then as a, I don't know, maybe it's a book or I had this idea of a box set because they're all, like, you could have it. Um, the Rose Crucian used to send you like a monograph and it was like a, a fancy page and stuff. And it's going, oh, that might be cool to have each of the things as a monograph or something like that. But something, I don't know. And um, just to keep it together. 
we'll see. I know at the end of the year, I'm like, oh, well, that was stupid. <laughs> that was too hard. Or, you know, but, but, um, but I did, I did get a lot out of it the last time. And it's uh, if you put, it's the same as anything. If you put, if you put the effort into it, you're going to get yeah. something out of meditating every day. Anyway, you're going to get something about doing well, it, yeah, uh, week, course, weekly yeah. active imagination. And so why you know it's seven days a week, five days a week. Yeah, every uh, every day. Well, whatever we. You want to do, but the, yeah. that's my thing. Is I'm going to do it seven days a day. Seven, seven days a day. That's how hardcore I am. <laughs> seven days a day. Um, yeah, so that's something on the fifteenth, which is this Monday. Um, I'll send you the stuff anyway, so you can. Yeah, have, no, it sounds, sounds interesting. Really interesting. We should have we should have started the podcast with this. You know, <sighs> maybe edit it. Edit it. <laughs> yeah, put it, just put it oh, back sounds good, man. I think, yeah. I think a lot. Yeah. I think a lot of people get stuff out of it. Do you know, I'll tell you something now, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not revealing any client. What's it called? Patient, client privileges or anything like that. But it's that. Yeah. Um, um, no, it, it comes from it comes from the courses, the counselling courses, rather than right. than from people. And it's that like, uh, and 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 it. it, it, it Carl Rogers, who I've mentioned before, he is he's fucking foundational in the humanistic psychology um world. He has these seven stages of progress. And the first stage is the stage where people are like I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Not you know, me. Yeah. So it's the yeah. it's it's when the Tony problem Soprano is with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's when it's when Tony Soprano was sent to the psychologist. Right. You know, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck am I doing here? Uh, court yeah. order, fucking bullshit, uh, blah, blah, boom. Um whatever. And um Kekavolo. What's the Fafanculo? Um and it's uh that's the first stage. And then the second one is that, okay, so the first one has broken down a bit and they're actually willing to try and engage yourself. But it's that, like, the hardest people to work with are the ones who are not willing to change yet. They have an idea that they might want to change, but not that's today. all it is. It's just an idea. It's like, I want to give up smoking at some point, but not today. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. But, like, but doing this kind of shadow work, is it's just because it's a... It's a thing that you have, that you that that you're doing, and it's physical and it's mental. You know, it's 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 like uh, Yadorovsky's uh, psycho magic, mm. because there's kind of a ritualization of it. Then it's forcing yourself to do it. You know, and that's like uh, uh, actually doing the thing, like properly. You know, taking a pen and writing down shit. That's far better than just playing doing the mental gymnastics. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like you know, although. It's fascinating stuff that I'm I'm reading about. It's that like you know our mind our mind can't fucking read. <laughs> it can't. Our <laughs> right, mind okay. can't fucking speak. It doesn't understand mm. language, but it understands symbols. And so when you even when you when you write letters on a page, it doesn't understand the words, but it sees symbols. And then and then those symbols are turned into words, and those words are turned into symbols in your head. And then it starts to understand what you're doing. So instead of just thinking the thing. Like if you actually sit down and write the thing, then your mind is going, ah, this guy's actually paying attention. He's doing something. Right, right, you know? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, I, I think, yeah, I think your thing is fucking fascinating, man. Sounds really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like it was, it was interesting last time, and it's like again, but like, not qualified to, 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 as a counselor or therapist to bring anyone through. It's a self, uh, self uh, projected thing. It's, you're you're mm -hmm. going to look at your, yourself, um, but of course you have to go through thing as well but uh, mm. no one no one <laughs> have you read had, that uh, um uh hal something is the doctor it's the the the, the doctors that um uh, gimbo roshi bases his um big mind thing on with right. the inner personalities i mean What's that's a similar thing mm. oh, i might just be called inner inner self or something like that i'll find it and i'll send right. it to you yeah cool 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 um, um yeah you should uh, just the other thing you asked about the gateway tapes you should do that that's good fun um it's like very woo and kind of it's the Monroe Institute. Uh, there's a uh, guided meditation for lucid astral travel or whatever. But the focus ten thing um, is a very very quick way to get to um, that particular state of um, awareness, being aware of being aware, like that ultimate, like oh I'm sitting in awareness. And then there's the I'm, I it goes up to focus thirty or something I think, but I'm a focus twelve, which is taking that and then it's a step. Past and you go well. How can you get to that? And you go, oh right, it gets a bit more cosmic and stuff. 
But when you get into so what it, are these? These are these are, they're just guided meditations, yeah. They're no, they're not. They're not. They're um, they're hemi sync things. So it's kind of like that huh? idea of um. So it's there's one thing to the side of your brain, one thing to the other side of your brain, and tries to get it's it's woo. Like it's it's some people. It's like some people agree with the science. Some people don't. But um, it certainly does something to your head. That whether it's you doing it by placebo or whether it's the, the, the these frequencies are actually you know, right. like the binaural beat. Brown noise. You're gonna poo your pants. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I it's it's I can find it very easy to go and through it to get into the the, the focus ten thing. Whatever. No, I, but that said, I can do it anyway without it. Yeah. But it, it See, it's, it's 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 I'm, it's very much. I'm more nervous about yeah. that kind of stuff because it's like. Um, you know, it's like the YouTube binaural beats for blah 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 blah, and it's like it's just nonsense, you know. Yeah, or right. there, there's a lot, but it, the, there's a, could go on the subreddit, uh, the Gateway Experience, or whatever it's called, um, and that's what kind of got me interested. The CIA have a whole paper about it. It's in the Discord. Um, Jason put up the the unretracted one, the unedited one. Um, but it's worth trying. It's worth, it's worth like I mean, it, it's it's. Uh, if not now, it's just go. This is ridiculous. But uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, just and, and so what's 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 the aim? Is the aim <clears throat> similar to like? Because oh, what you're describing ha, to ha, me, have an out of body, be God, do what it, to experience. Because right. like, what the, you're dog. describing sounds to me a bit like the Aether's thing. It's the different layers of consciousness. Yeah, I'm very. Uh, I'm only on wave two, and there's like ten waves, so I've, 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 I'll, I'll know more as I progress. And I'm not doing it every day. I just uh, it's it's when I when I can. Um, but it's easy. You just you just you get the track ready and you listen to it on your headphones. And yeah, there's there's a chanting bit in it as well, which which yeah you have to uh, on your there's a load of guys come going oh, and on your uh, out breath you have to intone the same thing. But it's, uh -huh. it's kind of that's 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 the parasympathetic nervous system kicking in when you go oh, over yeah. and over. Oh, it's the same thing. Only going, ah, oh, ah, oh, and you do that for a couple of minutes, and you put all your worries in the box, and then you do an energy thing. It's kind of like the middle pillar type thing. You know, so there's all of the all of these kind of disparate little ideas, but it's all in one thing. And then, then after a couple of the tapes, your man goes, "Do your stuff, and I'll meet you at the end." <laughs> you know, I'll meet you at Focus Ten, and then he brings you into the Focus Ten, and there's a there's a um, an affirmation as well. And then the the uh, when you get into then the Focus Twelve, the sounds kind of change. There's kind of a you, you count from ten, eleven. 12 and by the time you get to 12 it's, it has expanded it's very interesting I'd be interested bizarre. to see what you think of it is it what? Bizarre it's bizarre it is yeah in that this is woo but why is it working? <laughs> you know, right. this shouldn't work what, what, but yet here I am <laughs> yeah. you know, sounds yeah. fun mad and it, someone's been doing tarot readings for me lately and they've been saying yeah no you need to be doing more stuff right and I'm like yeah but I'm meditating no 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 not enough right yeah yeah and it, well, this is definitely, uh, it's not quite meditating. You know, it's, 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 not, it's yeah. not that you're replacing your meditative practice with this. It's, it's, an, it's like, in the same way that an act of imagination isn't going to replace your meditation. It's a different thing. It's, it's yeah. a closed eyes process or whatever you, you want. Um, but it's, uh, yeah. Oh, they're in the Discord. They're easy enough to, to find any of the, um, again, if you... Yeah, no, I had, had heard of it before. Yeah. I had heard of it before. Right? This is interesting stuff, all right. But then it was just like, oh, God, time. Time is the yeah, enemy. That's it. Time is the enemy. Oh. That's it. That's just literally it. And time is the enemy of the podcast because that's one fifty-two. That's the longest podcast in twelve years. Of course, it's only the third podcast in the last twelve years, but uh, nevertheless, I think you should edit edit those bits in at the start. But then you're going to have to come back and edit this bit just for Eco Clown, Peter Kingsley. <laughs> Bye.